to historic Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, the football capital of the South. The house that legendary Alabama coach Bear Bryant built with players like Joe Willie Namath. And tonight in the XFL, the visiting Los Angeles Extreme tries to unscrew the Birmingham Bolts. It is time to scramble. Now let's meet tonight's scramblers from the visiting LA Extreme in his first scramble attempt. Number 15, Damon Dunn. And for your Birmingham Bolts with a record of one and two, number 25, Toya Jones. The referee for tonight's game is Steve Pavan. On my whistle. On my whistle. And there they go for possession in the first half. Choice of possession. And the Bolts recover. Toya Jones. Birmingham has won the scramble. And the crowd goes crazy. A look at updated standings from our XFL weekend. Birmingham Orlando is undefeated. New York has just won. Birmingham could solidify its place on second place with a win tonight. Meanwhile, over in the West, the LA Extreme, if they win out, they control their own destiny. Hi again, everybody, along with Brian Bosworth. I'm Chris Marlowe. LA picked to win the XFL in preseason. Has been good and bad, up and down, in and out. In a word, unpredictable. But, Boz, that hasn't hurt their enthusiasm, their confidence still riding high. Well, there's a difference between confidence and cockiness, and L.A. is guilty of cockiness. They believe that they're better than any of the opponents that they play against. And that's got them in trouble a couple of times already this season. The question tonight is, are they going to take care of business tonight at Legion Field, or are they looking past this week's game with Birmingham to next week's game at Orlando. Speaking of Birmingham, they got off to a promising start at 2-1, and one, but the last two weeks, the Bolts have fallen apart. They've been outscored 69-16 to 16. this week. Head coach Jerry DiNardo has made some changes. He has, but he's also said, I'm not going to panic. The two changes he's going to make tonight, he's going to revamp that offensive line because it needs help, and he's going to open up this offense. They're going to go deep early, look for the bomb. You might even get a score in the first quarter, which they haven't done yet this year. Speaking of the bomb, two of the best quarterbacks in the XFL on display tonight. Tommy Maddox for the Los Angeles Extreme and Casey Weldon for the Birmingham Bolts. Two guys that Mike, can by the way. Yeah. For each quarterback, an emergence. Tommy Maddox, once the highly touted gunslinger out of UCLA, now finds himself at the helm of what may be the most impressive offense in the league. Maddox is picking apart the secondary. Tommy Maddox is brilliant tonight. Casey Weldon, once the Heisman runner-up, booed at home until commanding both the teams and fans respect. Seeing what Casey Weldon is going through, I've got all the respect in the world for this guy. Tommy Maddox demands his respect. I'm trying as bad as you, Joe. Every I know that. Up on the field like that in there. Casey Weldon earns his respect. Tommy Maddox. Casey Weldon. Tonight. Tommy, the rap on you guys is you're cocky, you're arrogant. Birmingham thinks you got a chip on your shoulder. They want to knock it off tonight. Well, we just got to go out there and take care of our business and not worry about what they're thinking. And uh, it's a big game for us tonight. We just got to go out there and do what we got to do to win. Casey, you've been manhandled by opposing defenses all season long. How will tonight be different in front of your crowd? We got a home crowd behind us. The guys are fired up. We're going to protect them. We're going to have a lot of fun. The weather here in Birmingham is spectacular. Temperature in the 60s, no rain, light wind. It is sweet. Brian Bosworth, Maddox, and Weldon. Keys for each tonight. Well, Tommy's a live wire. There's no question. I talked to him early in the week this week. He said he has to be on for his team to win. There's no question about it. With Casey Weldon, on the other hand, I mean, this guy's a warrior. He's gotten up for more violent hits in the XFL than any quarterback I've seen. But he needs the help from his team if his team's going to win tonight. Birmingham won the scramble. They will receive Curtis Alexander, one of the deep men, number 32. He's joined by number 37, Eric Sloan. Jose Cortez. 
LA's a three and a half point favorite tonight. That's a big favorite for a visiting team. Let's hope uh, they got to return that ball. We're underway on UPN. Bringing it out is Curtis Alexander, and he has dropped near the 15. So Casey Weldon wearing number 11, a star at Florida State years ago, the 1991 Heisman oh, Trophy oh, runner-up. He played eight years in the NFL with the Are we Eagles, Are we Bucks, rolling? Chargers, and Redskins. Are we Interestingly, he never started a game, oh, not oh, even oh, in preseason. This is his chance to start here, and he's playing well. First, let's go, let's go, let's go. Snap it, snap it, snap it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. The concern for Weldon is the offensive line. James Bostic, the running back. Weldon, quick pass, and the pass is dropped. Typo McGuire, incomplete, former star at BYU. That pass on the money early. And that's the, that's the kind of start Coach Jerry DiNardo doesn't want to see happen. He's got to get his guys clicking, and they need to get some confidence, and that's one of the things he's concerned about the most. Offense, they don't have the confidence they need. Birmingham has not scored a point in the first quarter of the season. The opponent's 29. One thing Jerry DiNardo wants to change tonight. Get off to a quick start. Throw deep early. Second down. Another quick pass. Pass is complete, but tackled immediately is Ed Smith. What kind of a game plan does Birmingham want to put out there tonight? The Birmingham offensive keys tonight is that they need to find a way to shore up that offensive line. We hit that early in the, in the telecast. They need to open up some holes for Bostic. They need to buy time for Weldon to get the ball in Stepford's hands. They need to be unpredictable. They need to stretch this defense. Go deep early. I mean, go for it on fourth down if you have to. Spread, spread the formation out and get, get L.A. guessing on what you're going to do. They need to get, they need to get this crowd happy early and they can't have any costly turnovers or any drive killing penalties i gotta say mentally focused you saw step williams the deep threat for orlando weldon looking for his third pass guns it over the middle complete that's a first down Tackle mcguire and mcguire's out near the 35 yard line tackled by terry billups a gain of 16. so weldon getting some protection throws a strike Mace, Mace, Mace. Pepo did a great job of coming back for that ball. Leamon Evans tried to come in with double coverage with the, with the safety. He's got to make that tackle, and he can't let the big yaks after the catch there. 83, read right scan on one. Left. 8-3. 2 You see what it is. You see what it is. Set. He's pulling. He's pulling. Blue 80. Blue 80. Hit. The deep motion is McGuire. Weldon launching it deep. Got him. And what the pass catch. is complete. Is he in bounds? What a catch. Is he in bounds? He is. He's marked it. No. Stepford right. Williams coming down with a big catch early in this game. Exactly what this offensive team from Bolton Ham needs. Brian Bosworth predicted the bomb on the opening series. And folks, you got it. Weldon to Stepford Williams, 37 yards. Stepford just goes down and beats his man down all day. Comes down with a great, great catch. He's leading his team in reception to 15 yards per catch. Out, out, right. Bostic, the running back, they hand it to him. Straight up the middle he goes. Let's talk quickly about the offensive line. Chase Raynock is making his first start at left tackle. He was signed this week. It's practice for the first time Wednesday. Antonio Fleming at left guard. Matt Hogg, who had a concussion last week, is in at center. Michael Lies is right guard. And Mike Edwards. Hard three. Doubles right. 28. Hard three, right? You see Big Mike Edwards there. He's the best athlete on the team and supposedly the best dancer, Boz. 59. Set. Second and seven. Blue and the eight. This is the running play. Opening drive for the Bulls. Someone jumped. There goes Bostic. Can he get around the man? Breaks the tackle. Bostic. And Bostic goes out near the 16-yard line. Run out by the former Auburn star, Del McGee. Always run the play. Mark her down, though. Always run the play. Always run the play. That's a nine-yard gain. Good job. And Weldon, you hear him in the background. Always run the play, boss. Offside. Well, well, it was a great Defense job. Was a great job of field team running decline. down this. The result of the play, first down. This Birmingham team, they've really done a good job moving the ball. They keep breaking down at, at inopportune times, and that's what's killing them. Al Luganville, a longtime coach in the business for 33 years. Last six, he was head coach in NFL Europe with the Amsterdam Admirals. First down. This drive started at the 15. And progressing nicely. Weldon, short drop. He's got his tight end again. And the big man rumbles. 
near the first down marker, Ed Smith. Interestingly, Jerry Donato said, hey, we don't throw to our tight ends very much. He's already caught two, boss. You know what? I planted that seed in his mind yesterday. You, you did. Both him and Paul. And it grew Paul's overnight. Running. Exactly. You know what? They have got to implement the tight end to try to soften up the, the secondary of this L.A. This LA team, and they're going to continue to attack. You ready for a play? They're going to attack that short yardage game as long as they give it to them. Eighth play of the drive. The Bulls doing what they hope to accomplish, coming out, riding down the field. Weldon throws to Fane into the end zone. Touchdown, Bolts! Bolts, stop the presses. The Bolts have scored their first points in the first quarter this year. We witness history. First points, first quarter for the Bolts in game six. Took them six games to get Axon Jackson in the, in the end zone. Weldon on that drive was five or six or 74 yards. You couldn't have, couldn't have drawn it better with a pencil if you had to. Rip, rip, 95, already hit. Bolts go for one here. Remember in the XFL, you cannot kick it in. You have to run or pass. Four one. Yeah. This is going to be a quick pass and a quick game. Three-step drop. And we've got a marker down. Or maybe a whistle. Really fast. Let them call it, man. Damn Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 83 for simulating the start of a play. Five-yard penalty, repeat the try. Some of the fellows unhappy with the call of the play, boss. Well, you know what? When the ball's at the seven-yard line, it's actually easier for the offense because it stretches that, that secondary a little bit. Now they can run fades. They can do a little bit more with their offensive package down there with the extra point. So mark the ball. At about the six, Weldon throwing the fade again and again, it's caught. That was a quick bullet fade, and Step Fred Williams scores the extra point. Step Fred, 27 years old, the second leading receiver in the league. Did a great job with his fade right there, he just, just beat Del McGee. The same, same situation there with Taylor Barrett. Taylor Barrett Phillips needs to get his head back on a swivel to try to get some help on that on that play. So the Bolts strike first, 10.36 to go, first quarter, 7-6. Michael Barkan with the Bolts and Casey Weldon, the first time you guys have scored in the first quarter all season. You said it was going to be different. How was it on that first drive? You were five of six. It's over. We got the jinx over. Finally scored in the first quarter. Got to keep these fans happy. Casey Weldon with a hot first quarter. And speaking of hot, the Birmingham Bolts cheerleaders are here tonight and they will work up a sweat, boss. The Bolts lead 7 to nothing. Damon Gibson and Latario Rashal are deep. Palazzo got the kick. Here comes Gibson. Ooh. Gibson is number five. Oh, I love it. At the 22-yard line, Calvin Jackson coming up. Oh, he just smoked him. To make the lead. Talk about a big knocker. Let's go weak tight twin, 45 All right, Tommy Maddox, a good game last week. He's been up and down. He leads the league in touchdown passes, but he also leads the league in interceptions. When he's hot, says Boz, he is really hot. Let's see how he comes out tonight. Saladin McCullough. Making his first start in the backfield. 48! They're going to start with a run here. And the ball to McCullough. And McCullough goes right up the middle for about four. McCullough replacing Rashan Sheehy, who did not make the trip. The tackle by Johnny Mitchell. Game plan for L.A. boss? And it's, and it's key that they started with that run because that's, the, that's what they have to establish. They need to establish a run because they can't live by the pass alone. Currently, they're last in the XFL with 52 yards per, per game. They need to spread the ball around the Go. passing game. L.A. is tough when they spread the ball around all of their weapons. Second and seven. McCullough in deep motion. He's out in the pass pattern. Maddox goes the other way. Throws a hover. Right side and Jermaine Copeland, the XFL's leading receiver, has his first catch. Throws a frozen rope. Dwayne Butler guarding him there. You know, that's, that's good coverage. There's not a whole lot you can do there because you got to respect Copeland and his speed and, and the way that they... They get yards after the catch. Now, interestingly, Dwayne Butler right there and Jermaine Copeland of the extreme, they're good friends. They have the same agent. I guarantee they you they're not good friends right now. 48! L.A. got a first down. Maddox throws a wide receiver screen. 
And it's yep, short yardage, yep, Jermaine yep. Copeland. Copeland is 23 years old out of the University of Tennessee. They'll pick up the shoestring. Copeland is the talker. <laughs> Butler is very, very uh, quiet. Butler's good, though. He's out of Illinois State. Good cover guy. I'm wondering. He said, I won't start the talking. No, but he can certainly finish it. You never want to start with a with a DB as big as Butler because he can knock, knock your block off. There's no question about it. The guy's very, very physical. 48. Birmingham leading 7-0. Hand the ball to Saladin McCullough. And McCullough breaks through to the 46-yard line. We were talking about Saladin McCullough, Boz. He's in the lineup. Rashawn Sheehy was good. He was consistent, said head coach Al Luganville, but he didn't give him the burst that they want. That's why they're going to McCullough. And, and Luganville likes that. He likes the burst of speed that McCullough adds to the uh, extreme offense, but he also likes the big playability in a passing game. But the thing that he, he's concerned about with McCullough is his blitz package pickups, and he's also fumbled the ball a couple of times in critical situations. That's something that Luganville's going to be looking for with McCullough tonight. L.A. driving. Maddox incomplete. Damon Gibson, 26-year-old receiver from Iowa, could not hang on. It was dangerously close to a, a forward pass there, or a backward pass, I'm sorry. Okay, NASA has Let's called the play. Wide, Lynn 5 on one, right? Lynn 5, you're going to get a comeback on your X side, your play side receiver, you're going to get a, a seam with your slot, you're going to get across in a small, quick slant from your backside players. 48! That's Copeland in the deep motion. Maddox stumbles, recovers, and throws a rope incomplete. In and out of the hands of the former San Diego Charger, Latario Rashal. Uh, base personnel, Texas X-142. Oh, no. Texas X-142. Let's go, Texas X, Texas X-142. I want Rick. Wig, wig! Tommy Maddox. Much more of a take charge player hey, than he was Get early in his career. 48! He's got a third and ten. 48! Ten. Faking, throwing over the middle, pass caught. That is a first down. Jermaine Copeland. And Copeland run down by James Willis, but not before. Take it out, baby. The Brinks, he got 25 yards. This brings me to my third point of what LA needs to do on offense. That's a third down conversion right there, and they're last in the XFO at 27%. That's just up their average a little bit. The other thing that they have to do is continue to do what they just did there, which is to do the yak, which is the yards after the catch. And they did a great job last week of that. They're picking up just where they left off with the yaks after the catch. LA offense humming. And the ball to Saladin McCullough. And McCullough breaks through a big hole, bounces it to the outside. And McCullough bangs to the 20-yard line, tackled by Dwayne Butler. There is a flag on the play. So, Saladin did a great job there of being patient, letting that hole open up, and then finding a lane to cut back into. Incidental face mask. Defense number 31, five-yard penalty, result, first down. There's it, your nice guy. If you've heard the story on Saladin McCullough, forgive me, but he grew up in Pasadena, California, went to John Muir High School. All he wanted to do was go to USC, run student body left, run student body right, and win the Heisman. Didn't work out, went to Oregon, became a big star, had kind of a checkered career off the field, but he gets his chance tonight. His first start in the XFL, and he's looking good. Maddox, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Frank Leatherwood. Leatherwood, 23 years old from Appalachian State. Threw that in a double coverage. Deion Fox with a coverage on, on Frank Leatherwood. Did a great job with Deion Fox there. Deion is one of the quicker linebackers that Birmingham has, and he's one of the few guys that doesn't your, come out front? on nickel coverages. Go! Jerry DiNardo. 48! His first year of professional coaching. 48! Second and ten for Maddox. They're getting no pressure on him. He's got a lane. Maddox is buried. Pays the price. James Willis comes up. Cleans his clock there. Willis, the XFL's leading tackler, buries Maddox. James Willis is really the heart and soul of this Birmingham team. Defensively, the linebackers are outstanding for Birmingham. Willis, Fox, and Scott will go to meet win. Willis at halftime. They've got a very, very aggressive team, and they're, they're going to go ahead and blitz and put some pressure on Maddox tonight. 
Not getting any pressure yet on Maddox. Third and five. Maddox throws, pass caught, and going down to the one is Frank Leatherwood. So they've seen something in the films. Leatherwood wide open, tackled by Deion Fox after a nine-yard game. They're trying to isolate Deion Fox, see if they can't get him out there on an island by himself. They've done a good job so far. It's the second time that they tried to do that with Frank Leatherwood. This drive started at the 25. This will be the 12th play. It's first... Let's go, man. Cole at the one. Two lead on one, right? Let's see if they can't hammer this ball right down the throat of the Birmingham defense. Go! 48! Leatherwood right, and right, McCullough right. in the eye. <laughs> Out of the eye. McCullough. Student body middle. He goes over the top and he's into the end zone for a out touchdown. Out Saladin McCullough. Saladin did a great job that entire series of maintaining composure, doing what he was asked to do. Finishes the job the right way, the L.A. way, with style in the end zone. So now L.A. attempting the extra point. L.A. this year, good on extra point spots. 50%. Consider 50% good extra points. 50%? Yeah. Better than the league average. Let's Better put it that way. Better than the league average, absolutely. Okay. 48. Good, but not great. 48! Maddox will look, throws the fade, and he it's picked it. off. He could return it. He's going nowhere. But Jermaine Oh, wait, wait, he's still open. He's still waiting. No, Butler's got it. And the Butler is knocked out at the eight. The rule on that is if the ball is caught in interception or fumble and an extra point, it can be returned by the defense for a point itself. Hey, uh, Tommy just doesn't get enough air into this ball. If he gets a little bit more air in the ball, he's got a chance to get <laughs> to get Darnell back in the end zone. But I tell you what, that's that's pretty good fighting there by Dwayne Butler. The first two series. Touchdowns. Birmingham's got one. LA has got one. Quarterbacks are on fire. Tonight's U.S. Army Victories in Life features Rod Smart. Las Vegas Outlaws running back. He was raised in the projects and through education in football has turned his life around. This is it right here. It's Washington Park. The ghetto. You know, by growing up in the projects, all the bad stuff around you, you grow to feel that you don't want that in life. By playing ball in high school, it showed me that I can go off to college somewhere different and get a college degree, play ball, and better my life. You're my baby. If I didn't go off to college, I'd probably be around here selling drugs or maybe in jail or maybe dead. You never know. It's things I overcame made me who I am today. Made me stronger in life, too. Back at Legion Field, let's wrap up the weekend scoring for you. Of course, Orlando remains undefeated with a win over Vegas. Memphis comes from behind to defeat Chicago and New York upsets San Francisco. Now, if you missed the end of the Memphis game, you missed a thriller. Memphis down with 20 seconds to play. Their quarterback, Jim Druckenmiller, he's a man. Look at what Druckenmiller did, 413 yards, three touchdowns. But what did he do in the last 20 seconds? Well, he looked for his pal, Daryl Hobbs. Rucker Miller in the shotgun. Looking to throw. Looking for the end zone. Looking for the end zone. Oh, oh, touchdown. A touchdown to Daryl Hobbs. Oh, A perfectly thrown ball by Jim Druckenmiller. You know, Jim Druckenmiller has been, been criticized his whole career that he can't run. He got 54 yards on that drive alone that set up that, that game-winning touchdown. The guy is a hoss. He's the king in Memphis right now. He continues. They got a shot at making the playoffs. 7-6 our score. Cortez rips one out of the end zone, and that will come out to the 20. Saladin McCullough activated for this game. Coach wanted to give you your chance to shine. It looks like you're doing a pretty good job of it so far. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Just... You know, whatever I get, whatever little yards I can get, I'm going ahead. I'm just do what I got to do to get the team down the field to score. Nice to get him in for six, though. Yeah, especially on the first drive. His brother is the starting running back at USC this year, Sultan McCullough. His talent in them jeans. Saladin with four carries for 15 yards. And now Casey Weldon, who has gotten off to a very fast start. 
They're going to do a sprint out here. They're going to try to stretch this red, defense red, a little bit. Try to get out of trouble. And hit. And the ball to Bostic. And Bostic tackled immediately. Chad Pegues in there quickly. Defensively for L.A., what do they want to do? L.A. really needs to dominate this line of scrimmage. They can't allow the Birmingham offense, especially their running game, to come to life. They need to continue that sack fest. Now, Birmingham's only been sacked eight times. L.A. has got 19 sacks on a year. They can't give up cheap scores. They got to keep the ball in front of them and make good tackles. And they got to play with intensity for four full quarters. That's what they've gotten in trouble all year long. Second and ten, running play, game, zip. Four wide receivers. Well then. And breaking a tackle is Quincy Jackson. Quincy Jackson up near midfield. Jackson, who played at Alabama, one of their best receivers ever. He gets 28 yards. This is coming right at you. Does a great job of being the first man. Leon Evans comes in and crushes him. Del McGee, he's going to be the best oh, sauce on the field because he's wearing A1 on the back of his jersey. He better spice things up a little better than that. Quincy Jackson is having a four, terrific two, four, year. He leads the team in touchdown catches. He's a big play man. Hit. Makes the big grab. Three wide receivers. This is James Bostick's favorite Ooh. running play. The draw by. And he's following his blocker as Bostick goes down. Bostick down the sideline to the 25 run out by Del McGee. Did you see him just run through the tackle of Juan Long? I mean, the legs on this guy. Boom, right there. He's fourth in the league right now in Russia. I tell you what, he continues out. He's going to move up that. If it's Prince, if he's fresh, you got it. Trips are 98 quick. I'm ready to hit. He'll move up that tree real fast. R, R. 4-2, swap, 46. Here we go, here we swap. go. Weldon has passed for over 100 yards now. Hit. Bostic huffing and puffing after that one. That could have been a backward, a backward pass to Joe Douglas. And he is tackled. Well, James Bostic, what does he do for relaxation? He likes to shoot a little pool. I like playing pool. A stick and eye coordination. You got to know the angles here and there. And, um... If you can play, it's good, but if not, you know, the game can suck to you. Playing running back, playing pool is almost similar. It's all about finding the right angle and hitting the right hole. Yeah. See, that's the key to life. Finding the right angle and hitting the oh, hole, baby. Yeah. Your favorite game, boss, pocket pull. And we got a marker down. If I know I can win that game. <laughs> You're awfully good at it. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, it's still second down. This is XFL football on UPN primetime, Birmingham. Make sure we at least get a field goal out of this possession. Okay, let's go. Doubles left. Scored first. Doubles left 90 on one, right? Eight plays, 85 oh, yards, oh, oh. led 7 to nothing. Then L.A. coming back. Let's go, D! 12 oh, plays, baby. 75 yards. D. Plays conservative here. Hit. We're looking at just trying to get a field goal. They're doing a quick, quick three-step drop here. Second and 20. Weldon's got a little time. Now he's flushed. Weldon's nimble. Weldon throws it, dumps it off incomplete. Nice play by Casey Weldon. And Weldon's done that all year long. He's done, he's done a great job of buying time when he needs to buy time to kind of cover up the suspect on this offensive line's problem. And he doesn't take the sack. He throws the ball away well. He doesn't have a lot of interception. Let's go ahead and go with our, let's go with our doubles. Yeah. Doubles left, 76, X special, Z corner. Yeah. The 70 series for let's them is a seven-man protection. Left. 76, X special, Z corner on one. Okay, they need X some special. protection. They need some protection, 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 and they know that. They let's look go, let's go, for the go, X. Go, the X is going to have the choice right here, so look for them to go deep on this particular play if it's open. It's third and long, third and 20. Weldon dumps it off. Bostic, can he make something happen? Bostic breaks through on tackle. And he has it within field goal range. So Bostic tackled by Chad Pegues. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Bostic gets nine on the short pass play. And we're looking at a field goal when we come back. Hope you're enjoying the XFL on UPN. We will continue with Birmingham leading 7-6.
football capital of the South Legion field. The aisle dance going on. All Getting those girls need is Brian Bosworth. Getting the down season. and dirty in Birmingham. I ain't getting down and dirty with none of those guys. The Woo, Jello, no, they're already dirty. The Jello is jiggling. <laughs> All right, Brad Palazzo lining up for a fairly long field goal. Palazzo has struggled this year. Just one of six. He's had one block. This is a 46-yarder. Right on the edge of his, his unmakeable ability. That was bad. He hit it good, though. He hit it great. And Palazzo says, thank you. He says, thank you to the Lord, my baby, because that's three points, and that's... Great adjustment by Casey Weldon to get that ball down. I'm Carmen, and I'm a raging Cajun from Lafayette, Louisiana. And when I'm not drawing blood, taking temperatures, or fixing broken bones, I'm breaking hearts as an XFL cheerleader for the Birmingham Thunderbolts. Open up and say, ah. All right, we're coming Dr. back. Carmen. Carmen is electric. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's... No question that this Birmingham ball defense have got some big hitters on the on their side of the ball. They just need to put things together a little bit tighter, help control that line of scrimmage. Halazo, who just ripped a 46-yarder his long this year. Latire Rashal deep for the LA Extreme. Halazo pumped up. Shoots it to the eight. Here's Damon Gibson. Gibson has some speed and he's wrestled to the ground. 10-6 Birmingham. Leading favored LA. Saladin McCullough breaks through a hole. Leaps over a man. There is a marker down. It's in the area of holding, but Saladin McCullough, who told us. Get out of here now. Go. 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 Come on. Little chatting there. McCullough can run a 4-3, 4 440. He can also bounce off a bunch of defenders Holding as well. Offense number 64. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. So the run by McCullough is nullified. And that's a shame because yeah. they, they so need to trip. get that running game going, especially eight's they trip. got a chance to get that. On one, right? get that here tonight because Birmingham defense gives up a league lead 126 yards per game. Hills down in the open field and buy time, right? Al Luganville talking to the defense. Telling his guys to break down and make good tackles in the open field. Maddox throws a bullet. And completing it to Damon Gibson. So Gibson, an important performer tonight with the injury to Larry Ryans. Ryans pulled a hamstring. He's not here. He's a fast receiver. Sloan covering on the play, a 15-yard gainer. You know, you know what Birmingham needs to do defensively tonight. That they got to confuse Maddox. They got to get Maddox out of sync somehow, some way, disguise some coverages, start to blitz the guy, and they need to win the battle on first and second down. Get them in third down situations. So they don't have a really good, strong third down pack. Maddox, the quick flip, and Copeland. Here we go in the third down situation right now for him. Get some short yardage there. Tackle quickly by Calvin Jackson. They're asking for a measurement, but it looks short. Maddox wants a measurement, and they call time to measure. There's <laughs> Maddox let his guys rest for a moment. We got it. The other thing that Birmingham needs to do is they need to limit the yak, and that's the yards after catch. Most of LA's passing yards comes after they've made first contact on the receivers. Boz, you are a, have a very good eye for these kinds of things. Is that a first down or not? Everybody's in my way. Well, I can't see anybody. Play, take a look. Jerry DiNardo's nose is in my way. Move, Jerry. Looks a little bit short. He looks short. I don't know. You ready? The last okay. time I made a short joke, everybody got on me. First down. That's a first down, boss. Like I said, Jerry DiNardo's nose is in my way. Get out of the way, Jerry. Jerry's a great guy. You know why? Because he, lo he loves his players. He spends time with his players. The guy spends a lot of time educating his players both on and off the field. Really cares about this team. Long time coach in the collegiate ranks. 10-6. Maddox throws it away as he is Dex. Pass intended for Josh Wilcox. 
pressuring was number 53, Keith Franklin. Keith Franklin, the only L.A. guy on this Birmingham team. He grew up and went to Dorsey High School, and he knows how to shock up a guy, boss. He came off the corner completely unblocked. Let's go Texas Sale, Texas Sale. Long away crash free. Tommy did a great job Long of getting rid of the ball. Free. Avoiding the sack there. Come on. Right. Maddox's yeah. modest number yeah. so Not far. Right. Yo. Not even right. Second quarter, 10-6 bolts. Go, 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 they're already go, go, go. starting to disguise the coverages a little bit. Yeah, deep motion. McCullough. They're coming at him with a blitz. And they got it. They weren't getting to him with four, boss, so they got to bring five, six, seven, as Jerry DiNardo told us yesterday. And, and, and that's exactly that's exactly right, Chris. He said they're going to start with a four-man rush, but if they have to, he's going to move a lot quicker to that five- and six-man rush. And as long as they can keep Tommy inside the pocket and keep him carried in there, he doesn't throw the ball well under pressure at all, and he doesn't like to run at all. That's the 11th sack the offensive line for L.A. has allowed. Jerry Crafts, Chris Brimer, Jonathan Hanbach at center. Jose Portilla at right guard, Nate Miller. Mike Miller. Here you go in a third down, 15 situation here. This is not, not what L.A. wants to be in tonight. Rashal is out in the pattern. Maddox, the draw play, and coming up quickly, James Willis. They call him the general on the field because he knows everything. He's, he's a young Brian Bosworth. See, with a Willis, talented Brian Bosworth. He's, you know what? If I had the, the, the shoulders he did, I'd still be out there playing myself. And Willis has had longevity in the NFL, oh. and he's seen it all. So you're not going to trick this guy, especially on those little tight screens like that. The best defender in the XFL, James Willis. Now. The first punt of the ball game. Dude, that's a bold statement with as many big smackers as we got. I'm saying it right now. Right. At the moment, <laughs> Noel Prefontaine to kick it away. At least for this game, he's the best defensive player. This ball is live and it hits the 45-yard line. Beautiful high right. punt. Great Step punt. Williams going back to his 16, Williams. And right up the middle he goes for about six. Coming up quickly, Jonathan Heimbach. Second quarter of play, 11.20 to go. The Birmingham Bolts lead the LA Extreme by four. McDougal has given Chicago a whopper of a lift on offense. We will be there next week. The San Francisco Demons traveling to the Chicago Enforcers. You can catch us at our regular time, primetime, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. Along with Brian... Oop. Marley, you know, you said that uh, James Willis is the best defender in the league. Would you confirm, Mr. Willis? Um, I can't say I'm the best, but I tell you what, every day I try to come out and prove myself to be the best, and I try to work hard. We work hard as a team, as a unit, and good things can happen when we work together like this. Is it this defense has something to prove tonight? Definitely. I mean, you know, we've been giving up a lot of yards in the past. Uh, we made a commitment to each other to come out and prepare and win. He is the XFL's leading tackler, so that would suggest he's the best. He causes some pain. He runs the team. And he is the man. Now, the man on offense, Casey yeah. Weldon, off to a great start. How's he look to you tonight, boss? Yeah. He's sharp. He's doing exactly what he needs to do. He's not Blue forcing 91. any balls. He's got time to throw relatively. Hit. And on the draw, Bostick. Ball's down. Ball's down. And a loose ball. down. They're scrambling for it. He was down. Lugan Bill says, we've got it. He was down. Now what do you think is going on at the bottom of that pile right now? You think, each other, you think they're asking each other what's the dinner tomorrow? I think that big guy's got it. How can you tell? He, LA's got it. Now the question, was he down? No, he wasn't down. Jamal Duff. Death blow. He got it. And James Bossick did a great job. Great job of moving in, trying to find a place to go. But you got to hang on to the ball, James. That's the one thing you can't afford to do. We talked about it earlier. No costly turnovers, especially in your end of the field. Can't get much more costly than that. Chad Pegues knocked it loose. Jamal Duff gets credit for it. And a big break for L.A. Great field position at the Birmingham 30. First down. Maddox throws a rope. And McDonald. To make that Copeland pass incomplete, covered by his buddy Dwayne Butler. And Dwayne did a great job here of covering Coach. He had man coverage, yeah. playing him tight. What he's got to do, he's got to force Cole Moore in the inside there. Hey. But he did a great job of hanging in his back pocket. The ball has to be thrown a little bit better, a little bit more downfield. Cope has a chance to get that ball going in the end zone. 
I'm on D Mac. Maddox, 7 of 12 for 67 yards. We'll give the ball to McCullough. McCullough first around the corner. There he goes. And he's hit hard and knocked down by Calvin Jackson. Calvin Jackson has been smoking people all night long. I think he's got a bad attitude. Somebody put some rotten milk in his bowl of post toasties this morning. A lot of Auburn. Former Hold your Auburn water. players. Hold your water. Hold your water. Yeah, on this Birmingham three. Bolts defense. Alabama guys, Auburn guys. Three. On three, right? Territorial hurry, picks. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Here, they're going to try. They're going to try to see if they can't hard count here and get a cheap first down because it's third down and four. 48. They win. They win. 48. Hold on. They may have gotten it. Flags are down. Still got to play. And the ball is overthrown, an uncatchable toss. So Maddox got what he wanted. He gets the first down. Tommy did a great job there. He told the guys to hold your water. And for some of those guys, I can tell they're holding more water than they want to. But they did a great job of hanging in there, getting that first down. Offside, defense number 90. Because I know they don't like third down. Why do defensive players always fall for the hard count? Yeah, they get, they get so energized to hit somebody. Let's go tight twin Y, tight twin Y, 46 hammer on one, right? 46 hammer, they're going to try to do an off tackle play here over the C gap. Go! Which is going to be on the strong side of their formation here, which is the left side of their formation. 48! First down, McCullough, he runs right, and runs right into big number 94. That is, of course, Johnny Mitchell, 24-year-old out of LSU. Jarrett Morgan is also there. And they've done a great job so far clogging that middle up and controlling that line of scrimmage because they've got a huge offensive line, L.A. Extreme does, because they've got Chris Brimer over there, John Heinbach, Jose Portia, Nate Miller, and the big Jerry Kraft over there. I know he's lying. He says he's 350 pounds. I think he's 380. 10-6 Birmingham, L.A. with an opportunity, draw play, McCullough breaks to the outside and takes the ball up to the 10. We mentioned earlier that Maddox is more of a take charge guy. He told us yesterday that it was hard for him as a rookie with Denver. He said, hey, I'm 20 years old. down, let's get it. I can't yell at a guy who's 33 that's won a Super Bowl. You know, it was hard for me to take charge. If I was more charge guy, that I might oh, still so be in the NFL. Freeze. Hey, he was also 20 years old holding a clipboard, freeze, rocket, so you don't get a chance to really let your gonads drop unless you're out there yeah. in the field hey, directing right. traffic. Go. Well, he's got his scones working here. He's got a lot of them working. 48. 33. Leatherwood in slow motion. Maddox fires. Oh, great catch. No! Frank Leatherwood he caught that right. with a left hand. That's going to be a first down or very close to it. That's, that's close. That was a great catch by Frank Leatherwood. Luganville loves his combination of routes, but he's got great hands, and he just showed it right there. Tommy threw that ball a little bit behind him. Leatherwood made a great, great catch. Tommy needs to lead him a little bit more than that, but you know what? Just come down with a catch because the third down like that, you just want to get the first down. Six play of the drive. They've gone for 22 yards. It's a first and goal at the seven. It's followed by that costly turnover at the third yard line by James Boston. Maddox to McCullough. Straight up the middle he goes. Saladin McCullough. Again, James Willis coming in there. Just closing down the fort. No place to run, no place to hide for Saladin McCullough. I think with his speed, you should really try to get him on the outside edges and use the stretching of their offense. It's funny. Their go, offense is geared to let the passing game one, right? open up their running game, which is actually opposite of most offenses where they want the running game to open up the passing game. There you have it. Wait, 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 wait. Ready. Ready, ready. Ready. Second and five. McCullough sprints nice to the right. Back. McCullough cuts down. Saladin McCullough, he thought about student body left, but there was no classroom over there, and McCullough goes right. Actually, the classroom was full on the left-hand side, and nobody was sitting in, sitting in the cheap seats on the right-hand side. Saladin did a great job of just maintaining composure here, instead of folding up tents here. Problem here is number 95, Quentin Reese, he's got to stay home, don't come down the line of scrimmage.
scrimmage and don't let the cutback go past go past you and you lose contain. Cost them six points right there. Quick, quick. LA going for one, an important extra point here. Give them a three-point lead, 6.20 to go. 48! Here in the second quarter, our stream trying to get to 13. Maddox, throw, Shemekele missed it. Couldn't hang on. Got to catch it. And he kicks it away. So the extra point attempt fails, but L.A. takes advantage of the James Bostick fumble. Goes down the field. The extreme has the lead now, 12 to 10 over the Birmingham Bulls. Welcome back. Now let's check on XFL action earlier today on TNN, New York at San Francisco, brought to you by Bush Beer. To receive the Jets up to the, he's got some room at the 50, cutting into the 40. Look out! He may go. Eric trying to get him. He can't. Richardson passing right away again. That old pass is going to throw wide open. Gardner, what a play! And Gardner's going to go for the score. And this time, no flags are down. Touchdown! Oh, huh? 41. First and goal from the two. Big break in. Oh. Oh. Diving in. What a shocker for New York to go in on the West Coast City by the Bay and do a little whack job on the Demons. I'll tell you what, it's nice to see the New York offense go ahead and open it up a little bit, not be so conservative, and go ahead in the XFL, you got to go and let it all hang out because you got such a short season, you got to let your players be athletes. Let them go out there and make big plays. Rusty Tillman getting his second win. Our congratulations to him. A big win for New York on the road. So here we go, Cortez kicking off. Eric Sloan, one of the deep men. Let's see if he gets it. It pops out of his hands for a moment. It's Curtis Alexander. And Alexander is going nowhere. We've got a marker down. You think the XFL is raw action? Wait till you see WWF Raw, two hours of the edgiest action on TV. Don't miss the number one show in all of cable tomorrow night at 9, 8 Central on TNN. Along with Brian Bosworth, Chris Raggy, Michael Barkhan, I'm Chris Marlowe. Glad you're with us. XFL football hey, on four, UPN. Two, four, two. Good game. The extreme leading here in the hey. second quarter, 12-10. 540 to play. Very important the Birmingham hey. answers quickly. James Bostick. That's not, that's not the answer they want right there. Bostick tackle by Sean Stuckey. Bolts, one of the worst rushing teams in the league. Third worst. Second only. No, they're actually second only to, uh, to L.A. And they're trying to run in behind Matt Hogg. And you mentioned it earlier, Chris, that Matt didn't practice all week long because of the concussion. Again, with James's speed and his athleticism, you should really try to get him outside. 83. 83. Just take it. And put some damage on the on the, uh, on the outside of the L.A.'s defense. Louis 88. Louis well then, play action, he's got a little time throwing it deep. Looking for Stephen Williams, he's got wow. it! Stephen Williams, touchdown for the Birmingham Bulls! Did you see Stephen with the control away? 80 yards! Well then, to Williams! And how about the throw by Casey Weldon on the money? Hard to judge the speed of Stepford Williams. You know why he was able to get that ball to step? Because he had some time. And that's something Weldon hasn't had this year. Offensive line has held up well so far. Now the Bolts will go for one. Got to run it in or pass it in. Four wide receivers now. McGuire in deep motion. The throw is on the money. And it's complete to Eddie Smith. Big Ed Smith, 31 years old, out of Trenton, New Jersey. Again, using that isolation on the linebackers, Sean Stuckey, Ed Smith. You couldn't, you can't answer the call much quicker than this on play two. Terry just needs to get a little more speed. And he just ain't got it. If you ain't got speed, you ain't catching that. Because that right there is money. 
Because you said there would be bombs, and there have been. And here you go, a situation again. With, they're doing a great job of isolating the tight end with the linebackers, and they're going to continue to do that until they put a DB on him. Bolts lead it 17 to 12. Hey, hey. I was talking to Gavin Hi, I'm Sunny, and I was born and raised on a farm in Texas. Ever since I was a little girl, I dreamed of becoming Miss America, and I'm on my way. But while I'm not preparing for pageants or working with my platform, I'm having a great time fulfilling another dream as an XFL cheerleader, cheering for the Birmingham Thunderbolts. Sunny. Yesterday, it's a lot. Rain and sun tonight. Still the rain, sunny. <laughs> An 80-yard bomb. Casey Weldon to step Brett Williams. Step got the step, didn't he? And then he got more than it. a step. You know what? Right there, I think Terry Billups strained, pulled, did something to his hamstring. Because right now, he's in the locker room trying to get that looked at. Moments ago, the trainer was looking at him. And now we're looking at him. Uh-oh, he's pulled uh -oh. his pants there. Cut, 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 No. <laughs> we'll do anything to get ratings on his show. Our director, Patrick McManus, <laughs> he is fast. He sees the pants coming down. He just jerks out of there in a hurry. Yeah, but he can always find somebody <laughs> undressing. That's think, the uncanny knack I think when, him, the, when, the, when the tops are coming up, stay. <laughs> the pants are coming down. You gotta leave, cut, cut. leave. Damon Gibson. And he is hook-tied at the 28. Step, nice run, nice catch. Terry Billis pulls up with a handspring. Was it a hamstring pull or was it Steph Brett Williams? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, we came out. We had to make a play. Uh, we had a turnover series before, so we just had to come out and make a play on this possession. And uh, Casey threw it up. When it got it, its result was a touchdown. Steph, two catches, 116 yards, oh, and a touchdown. Oh, so, they're L.A. The, they were the two tandem duos. Oh, yeah. That lead the XFL in receiving him and Quincy Jackson, Darnell McDonald, and Jermaine Copeland tonight. You can't get a lot more excited than that. Paladin McCullough, and he is making the most of his first XFL start. He has already scored two touchdowns. Grew up in Pasadena, California. Actually recruited by Al Luganbill to play at San Diego State. But, Boz, an interesting ha thing happened on his recruiting trip in San Diego. He fell asleep. And Al Luganbill, that was a little tough for Al to forgive him on that. I've sat down with Al Luganbill. It's not that hard to fall asleep because he's kind of a monotone boring guy. He's like one of the professors in the philosophy class. You just don't want to listen. Luganbill says, I hold no grudge. McCullough got 14 on that run. And now. Look at that action pass right there. He's, He's got a wide open. There. Wow! There he goes! David Gibson touchdown! Tommy Maddox throws a strike. Such a car got magnified, then he got electrified, and then he got burned a lot. Hell, he got toasted on both sides on that play. And butter. Damon Gibson catching a 58-yard bomb back the other way from Tommy Maddox. You know what? The critics have been calling the, our play in the XFL isn't that great. And I, I beg to differ. I think over the last couple of weeks, our play, especially the offense, have really come to the call. We put some points up on the board. We're an exciting game to watch. No question about it. I like to see that you're coming around. You finally, you finally figured out that nobody cares about defense. You were a great defense, but nobody cares. They want you know to see they offense. Care about? They like the big hits, though. I like the big hits, the snap knockers. Saladin McCullough, and he is working his way into that zone, Boz. He looks like a starter for the LA Extreme. Maddox says, yeah. Go back to the touchdown for a second. It's a great play fake, but Seth Curry just, he just does a poor job of coverage on that play. I tell you what, Damon Gibson put in an extra overdrive speed on that gear, because I tell you what, he pulled away, he pulled away fast. Tommy knows that was a big play to come back after that big touchdown by Stepford Williams. Thanks, Bubba. Yeah. 19 to 17, the extreme leading the Bulls here. Last night in Las Vegas, in case you missed it, a crucial fourth down decision for Vegas and head coach Jim Kreiner.
He's going well, to talk about that well, we very thing. Pin him deep and play field position, play defense. For, for what? Well, we got three, they got three full minutes. We can stop them defensively and get the football back. That's the question. Fourth and four. We can. We can three hear. minutes to go. Yep. yep. And two timeouts. Two. Two and two. Yep. Well, we can run. We can run that hot tornado again. Get him yeah. inside. Throw the first down. Come on, quads go. All right. Uh, Nevada. Go Nevada. Where is our defensive coach? Here. here we go. What do you guys want to do? We're going go for it. For it? We're going. For it. Well, here we go. You heard the negotiation on the sidelines. They decided to go for it on fourth and four. Biggest play of the game, right here. So that effectively ended Las Vegas' chances. Were they, were they right to go for it, boss? Absolutely not. You know, Coach Kreiner made the right call. It was a gut call. He want, I mean, you got a defense like that, the Desert Swarm, you kick the ball down into their, their end of the field, and then you play defense. You got not only two time, timeouts, but you got the third down, the third timeout with the two-minute warning. You had plenty of time. They just made the wrong call. The offensive coaches talked him into that one. You saw Al Luganville and Jerry DiNardo. Critical game in XFL football for both these teams. Remember, the winning team tonight gets a $100,000 bonus split up amongst all its active players. Curtis Alexander. Excuse me, boss. Let me get Eric Sloan running up the middle and getting gang tackled. All right, coming up at halftime, we will recap uh, week six in the XFL. We'll meet the general. We'll tell you who that is. We'll be hanging with Jermaine. And you know who that is. And then we'll be inside the locker rooms to see if anybody, you know, goes to the bathroom or drops their pants. Don't you think? <laughs> now, is that these guys' locker room? Well, we can go back and see the other guy, uh, the, the cheerleaders' locker room. Yeah. That was a fun piece like that. I, I liked that last night. Yeah. We will see Willis. We will just saw Copeland, and there are Jermaine Copeland's uh, Paris Donald and Glenda. His, also, his son is here. Now, Weldon dumps it off to Bostick. Nice catch. James Bostick. I tell you, this has just been an offensive explosion. 19 to 17, all the scoring done here in the first half. Jeff Russell coming up to make the tackle. A nine-yard gain for Bostick. The reason that play worked was Casey was able to feel the backside pressure of Dave Ritchie stepped up in the pocket, unloads it to, to James Bostick, and Bostick has all place all day to run before somebody gets through his ankles. Should just let it go all the way down. Jesus Christ. Bad spot. Bad spot. He was out there. Bostick. It's going to be close. Good. Having a good game rushing with the exception of the fumble, which led to an extreme touchdown. That's a bad spot. Let's keep going, man. That's one of the things that they need to continue to do. Get the hands, get the ball in the hands of their athletes that are going to make the big plays. James Bostick, Stepford Williams, Quincy Jackson. I like what he's doing with the tight end. That whole package. It's really confusing the LA defense. Steve Pamone is our referee. Weldon's got some great numbers. He's 9 of 11 for 199 yards and two uh, touchdowns. Let me go rip 138. Make it look like you're going for the No, I don't want to sneak it. Okay. No, 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 no. Let's go. Let's take a shot right here, Coach. I'm telling you. Hey, you know what? It, it is short. It is short enough where we can go and explode from now. I mean, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Let's go. It's okay, so go on. X choice, Z out. Did you hear that? Yeah. yeah. Casey. That's Dave Arslanian with the call from the box. He's up in the booth tonight. And this is what you got to do. You got to be unpredictable. Second down and short, like, like it is. It's just inches. Go ahead and go deep when you got the shot like this. You got two plays to get the first down. It's inches. If you can't get the first down on third down and inches, then you shouldn't be playing football. Casey Weldon. When we come back, he will throw the bomb again. Stay with us. What he's going to do. I know. They always want to. Bolt's always, offensive coordinator up in the booth for the first time this year, you, Dave Arslanian. See what they're in. And it's like, you know I mean? I, Trying to figure out the play to break one in. I don't know what the protection is. Yeah. 
Jerry DiNardo and Arslanian and agreed this week, let's move you up to the booth, get a better visual aspect of the field, and it's it's resulted in 17 all, first half points. And it's so funny, they both came up with the idea on the hit. same day. Yeah. Then they told each other. And then they told each other about it, you know, so that tells you that they're starting to meld together and think on the same page. Second and short. Bolts have told us they're going to try one here. The fake. Weldon. Pressure, and he throws, and he's got his man. And it is Quincy Jackson, 23-year-old out of Alabama. He gets 15 yards and a first down. And they, and they took Stepford Williams out on that play because that dope. Del McGee and Ricky double Parker right. double covered double him on the outside, right. so Weldon did a, Z. Well, did a right, good job right. of Z. finding oh, time, not double forcing one. the ball, getting the yards that he needs to get here. Four, if two. anything, more Four, than three two. points comes out of this, this is a successful Set. drive for the Birmingham Bolts. First down. Blue and eight. L.A. shows blitz. Here they come. Weldon dumps it off. Nicely done. Quincy oh, Jackson. Blockers. Quincy Jackson. Go. Jackson tackled at the 25-yard line. Ricky Parker. Give credit to Casey Weldon. He unloaded that ball perfectly, Boz. He read his keys. And it's funny. When Stepford wins, is taken out of the, out of the offense. Out of the offense, it's a go-to after guy with Action Jackson. He's got 20 receptions with three touchdowns. Watch the blitz. Oh, may get a Yankee here, man. He gets 24 yards on that play to Action Jackson. Set. It's a 90 series. It's a three-step quick, quick pass. Go, 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 go. Well, then, another shorty whips it over the middle. Incomplete. Pass behind Ed Smith. So far, the offensive line has held up pretty well. They've done a great job considering the patchwork yeah, that they had to do. Down this week. And Chase Raynock just obtained from Chicago. Didn't practice until Wednesday. He was the concern. Antonio Fleming left guard. Matt Hogg with the concussion at center. Lies, Edwards, and Smith. Let's go our doubles right. 135 boot Chicago again. Doubles right. Doubles right. 135 boot Chicago. Let's go. Let's go. 135. That's their 100 package and they're going to play action past this. See if they can't freeze the linebackers and get an isolation on, on the deep coverage. They're playing cover two right now. Williams is at the bottom of your screen. Weldon rolling. Weldon firing complete. And he is working with his buddy Ed Smith. Donnell Day covers. Nine yards on the play. Does Weldon look like uh, Joe Montana to you a little bit in his helmet? A little bit? He's got that young quality yeah. about him. He's also got that young excitement about him. He's young, he's fresh. He's yeah. brand new. I think he still does it on okay. the paper. Let's go. Doubles right. Doubles right. Uh, 28. Doubles right. 28. Hey, hey, we got to have this. This we is going to be a running play. It's a 20 double, double series right, where they like to. 10 wedge. 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 10 wedge is going to be a quarterback, quarterback uh, sneak right Set. up the middle here. There he goes. Hey, look at Weldon pounding. Casey Weldon told us earlier, hey, listen, I've gotten pounded this year, but the last eight years, I've held a clipboard or sat on the bench, so I'm rested. No! You got it? He's got it right here. Both say he's got it. Extreme says no. Casey is having the time of his life this year. This is a dream come true for him to come in here to Birmingham and play and lead a team. What? Let's go. And have these kinds of receivers at his at his beck and call. A lot of measuring tonight. So they bring the chains on. What happened on that X? Either third and one or first down. First it looks down. like first down. So the Birmingham Bolts with a minute and eight to play. Double drive. Trailing 19 to 17. Let's go uh, uh, eight over motion. Doubles right, 54Z. Ooh. So doubles right. Doubles right, eight over, 54Z on one. The 50 package is a screen package, and what they like to do yeah, with their yeah. screen package is they like to do a double screen. Bring somebody in the middle, use their offensive line, and, and they're using a screen package on the outside when they're slot guys. So it's a quarterback choice here with the screen. Well, done. Got some time. Throws on a bounce. Incomplete. He was looking for step. Covering was Jeff Russell. Weldon told us last time we were around that he thought Step 93 should be in the NFL. Their 90 package. Right, Look at that hand. Ready. Everybody, be ready on this one. Let's go. Trips off. Huh? Trips off. Trips off. Why up? 93 on one. He's taking some punishment, and one of the things that he taught, told, told me yesterday, he has a bad finger, his pinky finger, but it's on his 
on his that, throwing hand, it lady. only hurts on his snaps. It doesn't hurt when he's throwing the ball. Oh, this is a 90 series three-step three drop. Bostic out in the flat, lobbing it into the end zone. Touchdown! The Who's having his career game. And they've done a, a get, great job tonight of isolating that linebacker. And L.A. needs to make a change and try to get the linebacker taken out of the offensive scheme now. You know, the linebackers for L.A., are, are, they, they like to flow, they like to hit. And right now, they're completely out of sorts because they can't do either. They can't flow. They're stuck on an island and they're having to cover Ed Smith. And they're not doing a very good job of it. The Bolts trying to punch in the extra point. Go, set. Weldon, incomplete. Good coverage that time. Ed Smith looking for their short pass. Leomont Evans. Now that Clemson knocks it away. And that's the first time you've seen a nickelback or safety come in and take out the tight end. Nice catch. I knew 51 couldn't cover you. Nice job. Going back and looking at that tight end. Get, Casey does a great job. Again, look at the protection he's got. He's got all, all game. He's only in a three-step drop. And Rico Mack never turns his back. Never turns his head around to look at the quarterback. So he doesn't know where the ball is. There's a few electro, electric bolts going through his body right there. I got him right there. Oh, yeah. I'm on fire. His numbers, boss, 13 of 17, 264 yards, and three touchdowns. And that's in one half. So Palazzo set to kick off. Nice, Weldon man. having a great game. Yeah, he missed the on that one. And he's also bleeding in the eye. Just tell me this guy ain't a warrior, man. There's some tough quarterbacks in the league. <laughs> Looks good, though, doesn't it? Looks Rom, good, though, doesn't Clement. I'll leave it. I'll see leave it right there. Well, yeah, he's leaving the blood on it. He loves it. Play. Look, he's that bleeding on his cheek. Strong, man. He's bleeding on his, on his eye. Uh, yeah, yeah. Came from the hand. Wow, man. Who's got the weapons down on the field? That's right. Birmingham with a kickoff. It is Damon Gibson. Gibson's got a seam. And Gibson hits to the 30, where he is wrapped by Dion Fox. They should get tired. So they're wiping Weldon off. 33 seconds to play first half. 23 to 19. And we got a man down. So an L.A. extreme player shaken up. They'll attend to him. 93, wide open. Everybody's safe, okay? Be a good, easy completion to you. And that's key right there. They're doing communication on the sideline. We are told the injured player is Rico Mack. Rico Mack is the player that got burned on that touchdown. And usually on special teams, because the collisions are so violent, because these guys are running full speed at each other at about 30 or 40 yards apart, the collisions are so traumatic, these guys, they don't feel it sometimes until like a week later. Casey Weldon, there's his backup, Jay Barker, who early in the season... Fans were calling for Barker. Some were suggesting suggesting a quarterback controversy. Barker being from Alabama, local fans love him. I think you were suggesting. I haven't said one thing about Jay Barker tonight, have I? Not yet. At lunch, I did. There's no way you could put it in there. Can't get you to shut up, can I? <laughs> shut up. I like Casey Weldon. Now, Tommy Maddox. He's had an outstanding game also, Boz. 9 of 14 for 128 and a touchdown. It's been a scoring fest. You know what? L.A. has spent a little bit more time running the ball than they normally do passing the ball. But that could work to their advantage as, as long as they keep this game close because if they can keep that running game alive, then it makes it difficult for the Birmingham defense to figure out what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, especially when they get in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah, for now. All right, why they attend to Rico Mack? Hey, Mom. Hey, Kendall. Alexis, Logan, Cade. How many kids has he got? Are right now for TV or no? Yeah, go ahead. just here? Casey, go ahead. Oh, good. Oh, we're live? All right. Cade. We're going to recap. We'll Logan. meet the general, Jermaine, and we'll be in the locker rooms.
He's got, he, he got a he's got a busload of kids, doesn't he? That, I mean, that's not them. Those are Jermaine Copeland's family that drove while. drove down from Tennessee. Donald Big fans down here. And Glenda and Jerome Jr. <laughs> <laughs> It's there a family affair, and that's a great thing about uh, the XFL. Um, you can bring your family out here. It, those, you can get tickets for, for 20 25 bucks. Oh, and you happen in an NFL like that. Right, buddy. Look at those eyes. That's beautiful. Back in 1997, Jermaine Copeland came to Legion Field with Tennessee. And this is what happened. Peyton Manning throwing Jermaine Copeland. Two touchdown catches that day. That was one of them, and then Manning, Manning to Copeland. Jermaine Copeland, ripping the crimson tide of Mike Dubose. <laughs> Copeland likes it here, boss. 58 solid Colorado on one, right? Gun. You know, Copeland told me at the beginning of the week, unless you, when you go into an opponent's stadium, unless they're booing, you ain't playing. And they need to start moving a little bit more. He'd like to get the ball right here. 23 19. Tommy Maddox on the roll. His first pass is incomplete. While we have a moment, I want to say hello to the LA Extreme's number one fan. His name is JT Stratagopoulos. JT is an eight year old in San Diego, California. He says he's hoping that Tommy Maddox throws three touchdowns tonight against the Bolts. He's got one so John, far. John, John. Is that like one of those home run wishes? Yeah. Where the guy could JT, three out of the park. JT is tough. Right. He's a mighty mite. John. Out in California. At one street, I know, Jay Buck. Buck. Go! 48! 48! Second and 10. Copeland in motion. And it's the screen pass to McCullough. Got it back. You know, just moments ago, we showed Jermaine Copeland ripping the tide here at Legion Field. How about Copeland's reaction? He looked up the screen. And he said, "Yeah, I, I ripped him. I killed him, didn't I?" Look at those eyes. Yeah, that's, that's it is. when I killed Alabama. <laughs> that's when I killed Alabama. Oh, the fans don't uh -oh. like that. Oh, like, give me that. See, that's the all-access right there because we can go down and Salih. listen and hear and see what these so guys are happen. saying and, and feel what they feel. Birmingham fans, Birmingham fans don't like that. The Crimson Tide blood runs deep in Alabama. L.A. has two timeouts remaining, 13 seconds, now one timeout. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Well, if you're going to give props to... I got uh, the Birmingham Bolt staff, yep. Steve Nussman, would like to welcome the two newest XFL fans, future XFL cheerleaders, Sarah Hardigan and Abby Jones, born on March 5th and March 6th. And by the way, you didn't know it was my birthday on March 9th. You didn't give me a present. When, when is March 9th? Is that it was today? Like Friday, dude. Here we go. You didn't give me a present. I had to buy myself a present. That's right, I'll give you the receipt. Maybe you can pay me back yeah. later. What did you get from your wife? Oh, she gave me something special. Go! All right, this is UPN. Tell me after this play. 16 seconds to go. Let's see how Maddox plays it. He's got four wide receivers. And the ball to McCullough. And McCullough goes flying to the 50. Up in and what a hit by Chris Schelling. They call him the shocker. And he stuck. McCullough that time. And this is one of the great things about these guys in the XFL because they sell out. Time out you know what? The hits are big. They got huge hearts, and they just love to play the game. And all of them are having the time of their life. Had to use one on the injury. Yeah. I got it. I got it. So LA out of timeouts now. Run out. The middle guy will run the out. That's route. Tom Luganville. The inside guy will run the son out. Son of our quarterbacks coach. Trips, right. Trips. Trips. Into the boundary. Sixty. 60, yeah. Got to throw Big Ben here, don't you think? Big Ben or Hail Mary? Well, what they're going to do is they're doing a 60 go. protection. They're going to go, go. go their offensive left. line. Was... Left. Let's go 60. Home run out. I'm one, right? Yeah, Home run. That's got to be a big well, play. It's pretty self-explanatory, but yeah. they're going to use all their offensive line and one back for protection here. 48! If he says we're going to bunt, that means a, a kneel down. 48! Right? Tommy like Maddox. They're going for, oh. Going away. That's a holding. That's a holding. This baby is coming back. Oh! oh! And Copeland is drilled by Shelley. Copeland got a little smack back That's right. from Shelley. And tell me, that ain't something that Shelley saw from that. Shelley isn't from Alabama, but the next best thing is offered. He killed it. 
He blowed up real good. Them body parts are everywhere. Back on this. Hey. Oh, wow. Got a free pop here, boss. Ball hung a little bit too long. And ouch. You know what? What's going on? He got a lot more, he says. He's got a lot more. And he's yelling at Copeland. Like, Copeland, he's a good sport. Remember, we're going to Pennsylvania. I'm one, right? Gonna check him out at halftime. We'll follow around. Damon, Damon. Deep, deep. And his dad's saying, wow. Go, boys! The boys! Throw it to my boy. He's a competitor, though, man. He comes back. He gives us, gives the trash. He's coming back. Dumping it over the middle. Damon Gibson, and that is going to be the final play of the first half. What an exciting half of football. Tell me, we built this at the beginning of the game. Two great quarterbacks firing at one another. This is a shootout. Well, we, you know, we're doing a lot of good things, but we're losing. So we just got to come out in the second half. We get the ball first. We got to go put some points on the board. I know you guys had a tryout for that post-corner, post-route. It worked for a touchdown. Obviously, the right receiver won that tryout. Well, yeah, it's a big play for us. So, you know, we got to have a lot more in the second half. Two, three touchdown passes tonight so far, Casey. How much has your offensive line helped you? There have been changes there. Oh, uh, they're great. They're, they're a lot of protection back there. I've only touched the ground once or twice, and uh, it's, it's really coming together so far. The way this works out, the team that scores last might be the winner. Can you play that way as a team? It looks that way. We're going to have to keep it going. They get the ball first the second half, so hopefully we'll get the ball last. The way you're playing, it can't be your blood, right? <laughs> Vince McMahon's ultimate dream. A scoring orgy in the first half <laughs> of an XFL game. 23-19, Bolts lead. In October of 97, you dominated this place as a vol. You haven't had a great first half, but there's another half yet to play. Exactly. I mean, hey, this is the first half of the game. We got a second half coming up. You never know what's going to happen. Just got to go out and make plays. And the family's on the big screen. That's yeah. my baby. I love him to death right there. That's my son. Hey, baby. Third. As little Jermaine. <laughs> James Willis, can you keep up with your offense in the second half? They've got three scores on you. What does the D have to do? Well, we got to come out and stop them. We got to get three and out. Uh, get offense, good field position again, and come out and execute. Okay, set and ready for the start of the second half. Easily said than done. I tell you what, it's tough to, to slow down this L.A. extreme when they're hitting on all cylinders, and Tommy's done a great job of spreading the ball around. They've done a remarkable job, like we talked about before, of getting the running game going. So they continue to do that, and as this game continues to go on, it could be a long battle all the way to the very end. I like it. Al Luganville's team has been in a lot of close ones this year. The kick's on a bounce, and that goes out of bounds. So that's going to be a penalty. Our Miller Genuine Draft Halftime Stats, Brian Boss. Wow. We had some yardage and some scoring. No question about it. Look at the rushing. They, they, they averaged 52 a game. They got 63 in the first half. Passing yards uh, goes to Birmingham at 266. Tell you what, it's the big plays that Birmingham's been able to do, and we talked to Coach Arcelian uh, this week, and they said they're just a few games, a few plays away from really clicking, and this offense has done that in the first half. They've really clicked this, this first half. So the Los Angeles Extreme, Maddox numbers in the first half, 11 of 17, 158 yards and a touchdown. McCullough has rushed for 58 yards and two touchdowns. He's been very effective. L.A., the worst team in the XFL in running, but they're wow. running tonight. Okay, guys, two injury reports for you on the L.A. side. Terry Billups, the cornerback, beaten on the long touchdown pass by Stepford Williams as a pulled hamstring. He will not return. Number 51 linebacker Rico Matt injured right before the half. He's getting stitches in his ear. He will return momentarily. Over -side, over -side. And they're going to come right back to another running play. Right off tackle. Actually, right off the guard tackle gap. It ain't fixed. 48. Deep motion with Josh Wilcox. And the ball to Saladin McCullough. McCullough led the Pac-10 as a senior at Oregon. 
But he got into a fist fight with Achilles Smith trying to defend his quarterback, and that soured some of the pro scouts on him. They thought he was a hoodlum from the hood. They kept asking him, Boz, are you a gang member? And he said, no, I'm not. I'm just a kid who wants to play football. Sometimes it's who you hang with is the reputation you gain. So you guys out there when you're young and you're trying to figure out if you're going to make it, look at who you're hanging around with, and that'll tell you. Birmingham running play here. Leading 23-19, Saladin McCullough breaks off the right side. Boy, the right side of that offensive line, Jose Portilla, Nate Miller, Jonathan Heimbach is the center. Bobby Singh is in there. Bobby Singh has returned to the offensive line. He's number 77. 49. They have opened up some big holes tonight. Jose Portilla, Nate Miller, Bobby Singh. And they're working against Quentin Reese, a kind of an undersized guy who's been trying to put weight on by eating everything in a house, yep. plus some parts of the things in the grocery store. McCullough again. And Saladin McCullough, how bad is the L.A. rushing offense? They only average 53 yards per game, Boz, but they're burning it up tonight. They're doing a great job, but they're going against the Birmingham defense, which gives up that buck 26 we talked about earlier. And right now, the Birmingham needs to really bolt their hatches down and slow this running game down. They're going to find themselves in a dog dog fight. And they're going to lose this one. L.A. already has 94 yards on the ground. And McCullough gets a rest. So that means Ken Oxendine out of Votek is in. Oxendine, his coach says... When you see Oxendine, what you see is what you get. Straight ahead, runner, bangs, likes to run over you. Doesn't have the burst of McCullough. I think he'll be in for a couple of plays, then they'll bring Saladin back in. Let's go, and that goes back X. to the balance attack that Lugumbo would like to have. He, obviously, the coach would like to have more, in, in this philosophy, have more passes than, than, than rushes, and that's what they've got, but they want to be able to rely on the run when they have to. On the roll, Good throws a strike. Was he in? Yes, he is in. And Jermaine Copeland gets 13 yards. And the reason that play was successful is Tommy got outside the, the containment, and he didn't have anybody in his face. He was able to square up in the line of scrimmage. Jermaine comes over on the sidelines, stops, gets one foot in balance, which is all you need in the XFL, and it's first down extreme, and they're moving his ball in the second half. Jermaine Copeland, they say the knock on him is that he's too slow to play in the NFL. He says, you don't know me. I catch the ball. I get open. I make plays. As long as you're one step faster than the guy that's chasing you, that's all about it. There you go. Whoa, touchdown, L.A. Good job, buddy. Darnell McDonald. Hitting boogie in Birmingham. L.A. Extreme coming out smoking in the second half. Tommy threw that ball before Darnell even looked back for it. That's how much confidence he knows where he's throwing the ball. I mean, that ball was thrown before Darnell made the cut. He threw it right on the money. Darnell makes the catch. That's the fifth touchdown catch by Darnell this year. He's got great hands. What a great asset to compliment Jermaine Copeland. Extra point attempt. Copeland in motion. He's got some isolation on the left side. Instead, hand the ball to Saladin McCullough. It's Saladin's coming out party tonight, and they're whooping it up in Pasadena, California, where Saladin makes his home. And that, that seven was way too easy, and Birmingham really needs to slow this thing down. 10.52 to go third quarter. The extreme 26, the Bolts 23. Once or twice, it doesn't make a difference. As long as I help the team win. What was that number you and uh, Cope pulled in the end zone after you scored? Oh, that's a little booty dance. Everybody know, know about the booty dance. Darnell McDonald had four TDs coming in. Now he's got six. Going back to what we talked about early in the broadcast, L.A.'s had five different receivers, three different running backs, all touched the ball for positive yards tonight. And that's exactly what they've been doing all year long. Eric Sloan busts through a seam, and he brings it back all the way to the 40. Jose Cortez, the kicker, making the tackle. Our XFL cheerleaders can sure get your engines going, can't they? But you don't have to wait until the weekend to see beautiful, sexy women tomorrow night, 930, 830 Central, right here on UPN. Casey Weldon hands the ball to James Bostick. And Bostick, rough sledding over the right side. Let him go, let him go. Jake, Jake, Tackled by Sean Stuckey. Get a penalty on him. 
Look at these guys. Grab a hold. Showing each other a little love. Dave Ritchie and Chase Raynock. Dave Ritchie's actually, I think, the missing link. For the LA defense? No, the missing link, like, you know, the guy that's oh. like that eighth one in the world, the guy everybody's looking for, that missing gene guy. Ritchie has been injured. He's just come back. He was injured in the first series against San Francisco in week one. He's won two Super Bowl rings. He's out now. Blue 88. Second and seven. Blue 88. Hit. Well done to Boston. And Boston's got some room. Boston get midfield. And Boston with a big gainer all the way to the Los Angeles 43. Leomont Evans. That's what they hanging need. Hanging on. They need to continue to get James Bostick the ball, but getting the ball so he can get outside the, the, the containment of the LA Extreme Let's defense. Go, That's where he's gotten most of his yards tonight. Get a little wide on this one. Let's Bostic go, gets 13. Rip. 92 flats on one. He's got 55 on the night. This is the 92 quick series passage of a three-step drop. They're mixing it up. They're doing a good job of that. Set. Red Going 28. To pass. Red 28. And hit. Bostic sweep right. Bostic blast down to the 40. Pretty good blocking. Then again, it could be a run outside. Ricky Parker, the former San Diego State star, wait, wait, wait. makes the tackle. If you can, just push him all the way down. James will keep going outside. Oh, you didn't? Hold on. Listen for the red. Let's go. Doubles right. Doubles right. H over. 93 options on one. Start on this side and go over. Run an option. Four, two, four, six. Second and six. Blue and eight. Blue and eight. Hit. Well, the quick drop. Throw. Yes. A beauty. Quincy Jackson twisting. And he gets the first down. Quincy Jackson. That was a tough catch. Well, Ricky Parker did a good job, but it ended quite good enough. He needs to get a little bit closer to Quincy. You can't give him that kind of room. Look at that. Doubles right. Doubles right. Sweet hands for Quincy. He gets 17. That was right, eight's back. Over here. Over here. And then Jackson and Williams give them two of the best in the league. Set. Come on, Blue 80. Blue 80. Come here. Roman in trouble. Looking to throw it away. Throws into the end zone. Incomplete. Pass uh, intended for Quincy Jackson. Ron Carpenter covering on the play. And again, well did a good job. I mean, he's only 6'1", 203 pounds, and yet he was able to shed the black, the talkers. Get now, one of that ball. Left. H over. 54. X. One of the concerns this week was the Twins offensive left. line. That is Chase Raynock. Age over, 54X on one. We asked Casey Weldon, what do you know about Chase Raynock? He said, I know his name is Chase Raynock, and he got here Wednesday. Other than that, I don't know a thing about him. He's from Montana. Set. He's done a good job tonight. Coming in from Chicago on a trade with the enforcers. Two, and eight. Hit. Offensive line is held up so far. Can they keep doing? Wide receiver screen to Steph Williams. Step Williams Go. wrestled down by Sean Stuckey. That was that 54 screen option where they do the X and they got double screens on that. And that's what they're going to do is isolate Step Williams and try to get him the ball and get some help out there on the corners. See if he can't get some running room back inside. Hard three, hard three, hard three. Trey left, 93 options, hard three. Let's go, let's go. They're gonna, they're hang in there, hang in there. Water, 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 water. and try to get a cheap first down here and see if they can't get the extreme Set. to jump off Woody sides here. Blue and yay, hut, hut. Didn't do it. Well then, throws, and that's complete for a first down. Ed Smith has become one of the stories tonight. Jerry DiNardo told us in a meeting, we don't throw to our tight ends much. Well, the reason they haven't thrown to their tight ends is because they had to use them in pass protection. But whatever changes that he made during the course of the week, they solidified that offensive line, and now they can release that tight end, get him one-on-one -on -one coverage with Sean Stuckey, and until they can figure out a way to get a nickel guy on their tight end, they're going to continue to find this L.A. extreme defense all night long. Casey Weldon, the loss he numbers for Jerry DiNardo. First down. And Weldon forced to call timeout. I need four. I would have went 66 right there. That would have been a 66. Time out on the field. We're going to step away for a moment. L.A. leading Birmingham 26-23. We'll be back.
We will see Jermaine next week as the San Francisco Demons uh, travel to Chicago to meet the Enforcers. That's next Sunday right here on UPN at 7 p.m. Eastern. First and goal for the Birmingham Bolts at the seven-yard line. San Francisco is going to have to answer the call. They got beat today by New York, so that's a big game for them next week. They're going to go 34, which is an off-tackle play with Fossum. They just zone block, and the reason they call timeout is because Casey felt like they had a three technique that was going to shake over and, and blow this play. Blue 90, hit! Well then, Bostick right to the middle of the line, and that play is going nowhere. Much, just much like that. The LA defense responding with a little gang tackling. Make it hard for him. Make it hard for him. Come on. What Casey wanted to do was run it. Was run a sprint out on that first down to try to loosen up the defense. But let's go, get a hold. Coach Donato was concerned about if they got behind and down the distance. So let's see if they come back with that sprint out. Is what Casey wanted to do. That's one long alternating series to Eric Heron. Good eight. Second and goal. High motion is McGuire. Well done. Oh! Oh! loose football. And Weldon fell right on it. Sean Stuckey blitzing from the outside got by Chase Raynock. I don't know if it's Raynock's man, but Stuckey, the fastest linebacker in the 98 draft, Boz. Yeah, you know what? That, whose fault is that? That's nobody's fault because Chase Raynock is blocking down. And what it is, it's one more guy than they got protection for. And bottom line, Sean Stuckey comes in and does a dirty dance on the backside of Casey Weldon. So Stuckey gets the stick. Weldon loses seven. We've got a third and goal now from right around the 13-yard line. Weldon pressured. He levels the ball forward. A little shuttle pass. And that's going to get him back. Well, we got some players down. A marker is down. Dave Ritchie 71. may have roughed Weldon. I'm done. Or it may be a holding. Let's see. I'm done. I think yes. the referee threw that, so it's back in the area where you're going to get a holding. You get Antonio holding. Fleming down. Offense number 71 on the takedown. That's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. That so Richie had, had the pressure, and he got held. That play, that play had a little bit of everything in it. We talked about this in the second half adjustments, and L.A. has done a pretty good job of coming after and finally getting what we got? What we to Casey got? Weldon. My uh, left wrist. So Weldon may have hurt himself. He's talking about his left wrist, and here comes Alabama favorite Jay Barker. He's the winningest quarterback in Alabama history, 34 and two. What a spot for him. Third and 23, but it's actually third and goal from the 23. Work my shoulder. Right 20. I don't know. He didn't tell me. Well, they're going to take Weldon off. He's going to go off, and they'll look at his wrist. And Jay Barker in for Casey Weldon. What's the matter? Left wrist. Left wrist? Yeah. yeah. Might you return? Might. Might. All right. The report from Michael Barkan. Weldon with the left wrist. Oh, hey, Jay. Jay, let's I'm done. I can't. I'm done. That was just moments ago. You know, the initial, throw. The initial pain that you go. feel yeah, after an injury right. is yeah. a lot more intense. It goes, goes in the locker room, gets a chance to, to actually see what the damage go, is. He D. may be able to suck it up. And you run something conservative here, boss. Jake Barker didn't want to come in the game this, this way. They say they just hand the ball to Bostic. They do on the draw. Bostic breaks up the middle. Oh. <laughs> And Bostic uh, oh, hanging man. on to that football, and now a field goal attempt. James Bostic tackled himself right there. He had, a, he had a lot of room right up the middle. He's upset about that. Here comes Brad Palazzo. He's already hit from 46. Here we go, buddy. And Palazzo will take the spot at the 25. So a 35-yarder for Palazzo. Remember, he started the night one of six, but he's made a 46-yarder, so he's been... Whacking him hard. And he made another one. Brad Palazzo. So the Bolts tie it up with the extreme. Let's take a look at 
how Weldon got hurt on this play. He says his wrist got jammed or something. Looks like he might have just fallen on top of it. All right, we're coming back. Third quarter, we're tied. 26 all. Again. Michael Barkan outside the training room door. Casey Weldon being uh, worked on his left wrist, as we heard earlier. He said it, he's done at least right now, and uh, we'll see if we can we can get a word right now. Case, what do you think? I don't know. I, I don't know if I can take a snap right now. So just just wait and see. Was it hurt? On did someone fall on it? How'd you hurt it? Yeah, it hurt on the two plays before that hit from behind. Yeah, I should have kept going. It was my fault. Good luck, Casey. All right, Weldon, 16 of 21, 300 yards, three touchdowns, and he has been beat up tonight. He hasn't been sacked all that much, boss, but they have really hammered him. He's taking hits all year long, and here's just another sample of what he gets when he plays quarterback. I mean, I'll tell you what, they unload on this kid, and this kid has got some fire in his belly to get up every time. You know, this isn't like playing linebacker. You've got to be tough to be a quarterback. you got to be mentally tough, physically tough, and it's these guys earn their money, and they earn it big Ridge, time. Ridge. So is Jay Barker and I've got to get, uh, uh, Chase is going to get his chance, a chance to shine. Short kick taken by one of the up men. It's Frank Leatherwood. They'll make that Josh Wilcox. Josh Wilcox out near the 35. Think these guys are having a blast? Well, wait till you see WWF SmackDown. Give me the music. Two hours of all-new action every Thursday night. The number one show on UPN Thursdays at 8, 7 Central. Chris Marlowe, Brian Bosser, Chris Raggy, Michael Barkan. A shootout at the Legion Field here in Birmingham, Alabama. We're tied at 26 here in the third quarter. Three minutes to play. Saladin McCullough. Chris McCullough with a short game. The sights and sounds, the XFL, we're going to lay out for a series. See what you go. think. Let's go tight twin Haley, tight twin Haley, 42 on one, right? Hey, what, well, we were running team? Okay. Wait, wait! Go! 48! Go, go! 48! Go! Hey, hey, why? Yeah, that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, okay. third and short. Let's get it. Sweet and tight twin. No, 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 no. You did that on both. Let's go. No, we yes. We I'm telling you, on both. I'm both. I'm both. I'm both. I'm both. I'm both. I'm both. Yeah, but you're not on the same side if it's flipped. It was a double set. Go! 48! 48! You know that's off the lead, not the draw. You got it now, come on. Sorry, right, though. 42 lead, right? Larry, yeah. Yeah, I just like Keep working. Deuce Keep tight, working. 142. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Deuce tight. Deuce tight. 142 on one, right? Six sag in to go. Six, six sag in to go. Wig, wig. Go. 48. Oh, we got a 48. Let's go. Let's go, Deuce. Dog away, Fred. 48 on one, right? Dog away, Fred. Tane is right. I got him. We got Cope on a linebacker. Go. 44. 44! Please! Hey, 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 get that shit out, boy! Turn it out! That one's better for the other one. Where'd it go, baby? Oh. Turn alert! 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 Turn al
It's wide, lens five, on one, right? Yeah. Hey, man, What's that? Hey. Hey, hey! Yo! 48! Yeah. 48! Hey, move! Hey. Okay. Pope's kind of hesitating on Prior me. to the snap. False start, offense number 78, five-yard penalty, it's still third down. You have just seen the sights and listened to the sounds of the XFL. Personally, I Let's miss uh, the soprano voice of the boss on the call, hey. but it's interesting hey, to Tom. listen to Tommy. the players yeah. and the coaches getting what into it. We're coming back. Yeah, That's the end of the third quarter. We're tied at 26. Birmingham left 7-6. Birmingham at halftime 23-19. Now it's 26 all. It has been a scoring fest here at Legion Field in the heart of Birmingham, Alabama. Something in every quarter. Everybody's letting it all hang out. We've only had two punts in the game, both by L.A. Birmingham's offense has been revved up so high, they have not had to kick in this one. The thing, the thing that I like so far is L.A. is really controlling the line of scrimmage, and they got that running game coming. Daladine McCullough has been the featured back tonight, replacing Rashawn Sheehy. Maddox will pass. Maddox throws incomplete. Out of the reach of Darnell McDonald. Tommy wasn't able to step up and throw and deliver that ball when he wanted to. He got hit in the backfield. Yeah. Move back now, guys. Move back. Good call. Noel Prefontaine on the kick. Keep in mind, hey. Prefontaine, the third quarterback. Step for it. Williams is deep. What they did, they, they dropped the three and the coverage, and uh, they didn't bring nobody up the corner of this. Live ball after 25 yards. Prefontaine, a booming kick. Williams will gather it at the four. Steph Williams trying to get around the corner. Wow, he got some jets. He makes uh, you know, a mud pie out of a cow pie there and gets about six. And he owns the in a XFL punt return record of 95 yards against San Francisco. So he's got two of the biggest plays in the XFL this year. You look at the receiving duos, both very, very good. Williams and Jackson outperforming Copeland and McDonald at the moment. So the Birmingham offense, after a 48-yard punt, starting with bad field possession inside their 10. Green 18! They're come with a wide run here. And the ball to Bostick. Bostick gets a block. Bostick tightens his way out to the 16. Guys, Casey Weldon, as you heard, is done for the night. The problem is not just his wrist, it's also his shoulder. Bruce contusion of the shoulder. They're going to check it out tomorrow with an MRI to make sure there's no rotator cuff damage. So it's the wrist and the shoulder that is keeping Casey Weldon on the shelf for right now. left. We got eight over 29 on one So that means number seven, Jay Barker, 28 years old. Played in Canada for a while. Actually, it took, a low, took over for Doug Flutie up there. Replaced him. Now he replaces Weldon in the XFL. Do another wide bounce here with James Bostic. And he's got the first down to James Bostic running hard. Liam on Evans tackling hard. So Bostic, after an early fumble, has run well. Check the next go. Name. Trips L, 130, 138, H flat, Z out. Well, we go. We got trips L. They're going to try to do a play action pass here. Here we go. Here we go. Anytime go. they do a play action, they're going to try to look deep. If not, they've got the flat and they got a Z out. Blue 88. This is the fight. wide receiver that's going to do it. Blue 88. Off play action. Barker throws a hover. Barker to Williams. Broken up. Stephen Williams battling with Ricky Parker. I see you are breathing. Ricky had great coverage there. It ran step for step with step. Didn't give him anything. Looked back and caught the ball. As soon as the ball came in, he whacked it away. It's exactly what you want to do as a DB. Listed as a free safety, but he did play some corner at San Diego State. That was great coverage. Second and ten for Parker Set. and the Bulls. Blue 88! No, no, no. Blue 88! 88! Bouncing off the left side. The first time we've seen Curtis Alexander tonight. Another Alabama product. 
Good job. Good job. Here we go. Good oh. job. Good job. Cool, Curtis. Uh, cool Kurt, his guys call him. Good job. Good job. Just a lot of confidence. Okay, here we go. Kind of a, a wiry well, we got guy. Right. We got 93 options on one. A lot quicker. R, R, R. A lot quicker than James Bostick. So they can take advantage of him in the passing game if they can get Set. the ball to him outside Green the pocket. Only his eighth carries and used sparingly. Third and six now. Parker throws the pass. is spiked up into the air. And it's intercepted. By Eric Heron, I think, got it. It was blocked up in the air, volleyball style. By Jamal Duff. You know a little bit about that. Jamal Duff is six foot seven. It's exactly what they've been trying to get done all night long. If they can't get to the quarterback, you got to get your hands up and knock the ball down. Eric Hayden did a great job of staying with the play. He stays with the play here. Comes down with a big catch. Birmingham lost where the ball went. It's another comedy turnover deep in the Birmingham red zone here. So death blow knocks it up into the air, and the former Marine Eric Heron intercepts and now LA a great chance to go ahead Maddox hooks it over the middle complete to Darnell McDonald inside the five Darnell has, Darnell has had a lot of success running that post route all all season long and he comes back with it again here they scored four three of their four touchdowns to Darnell has come off this post pattern he almost got number number six on the year. He's got five right now. McDonald, two catches in this one. First and goal. Saladin McCullough, and he scoops to the one. I don't think he got in. Donnie Mitchell and Jarrett Loggins got lumpy in the middle. McCullough's already rushed for two touchdowns. He's also scored a couple of extra points. There is Jamal Duff. He's the hero at the moment. He got the tip up into the air. And it was intercepted. And, and it gives you just a little bit more time. Okay. Well, you know, if he can't come with the nasty yeah. rush and he comes with those nasty arms, puts him up in the air, he gave L.A. a chance here to take the lead. Second and goal. Inside the one. Saladin McCullough. I don't think he did either. Yeah. The Bulls yeah. say no. Yeah. Saladin waited too long, tried to pick and choose his way inside the hole. When you get down there in the end zone like that, I think you just got to go ahead, get the ball as deep as you can, and take a dive. Shocker got him. Chris Schelling, both second leading tackler and the team's biggest talker. Schelling earlier got the rip. Oh, yeah. Ron Copeland. He's huffing and puffing. This is a big play here. Third and goal from the one. Can the Bolts dig in and hold them? 48! Go! 48! Maddox. McCullough. He's not going to get there. Tackled immediately. Dwayne Butler. Coming up from his quarterback position. I'm the man. I mean, there ain't some testosterone on the field tonight. And they're going to bring out Jose Cortez. Yeah, yeah. Huge. I, 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 I didn't like quarterbacks. That's what you call a release. Football style release. You get a hit like that on the goal line and third and short. Ain't nothing prettier. Nothing feels better than that. 19 yard attempt. Cortez shoe off. And he gets it. That's a victory for Birmingham right there. Jose Cortez. He's made 10 out of his last 11. He is the leading scorer in the XFL. So Barker threw the interception. Jerry DiNardo's team gets off the hook by allowing a field goal. We're coming back. Third quarter. Extreme by three. With cornerback Dwayne Butler, who comes up with a huge stop on third and goal. This team's had trouble against the rush. Not there. Well, you know, uh, our back was against the wall again, you know. And as a defense, we was in a huddle and we said, look, we got to stop him. We got to make a play, and that's what we did. Th a small victory to get away with a field goal after what happened? Yeah, you know, you got to be pleased with a, with a field goal. You know, we'd like to stop him and get the ball back on the goal line, but we didn't. They got three points. They didn't get six, and we're still in. 29-26, L.A. 
leading the Bolts. Interestingly, the betting line in this one was L.A. by three and a half, boss. So the extreme not covering at the moment. Not covering, but you know what's going to come down to what we talked about in the second half. A team that scores last and maybe a touchdown should win this game. Eric Sloan at the 15. Finds the seam, breaks to the outside, and Sloan with a terrific return out near the 42. Don't forget, tune in next Sunday for more XFL action. The LA Extreme go up against the undefeated Orlando Raids. That's at 4 p.m. on TNN. Then at 7 p.m. right here on UPN. you got the ends right. The Chicago Enforcers, led by the tough running of John Avery, take on the explosive offense of the San Francisco Demons. We will be there. Next week's game with uh, the Extreme in Orlando could be the game of the year today because Extreme really needs that game battle to keep pace in that wild, wild west. First play is a running play. They hand the ball to James Baste. Bostic over 80 yards now. Here we go. We got trip sale. We got Z over 98 quick on one right. Oh, oh. Bostic has been the workhorse. Now second and eight. Green 16. Ready hit. Barker in trouble, and down he goes. Barker looks a little unsure of himself. He's retreating like Bob Barker on that play, a little sluggishly. Well, you know what? You got some offensive line, line breakdowns going on in there because they came in way too quick there. Barker didn't have time to even scratch his head. Dave Ritchie comes in. He comes in unblocked. Almost, actually. He got to get a better block on him. Dave Ritchie's way too talented with his hands. He put the off, right, offensive tackle down. Comes in and makes that tackle. He's the madman over there, that missing link we talked about earlier. Two Super Bowl, two Super Bowl Set. rings with Blue Denver. Blue Blue 15 now. Oh. Parker passes tip. Picked out of the air by Quincy Jackson, and Jackson is tackled immediately. That's a second series with a second tip pass on third down. Thank God it didn't, they didn't, uh, didn't cost him an interception there. Quincy Jackson comes down with the ball, but I tell you what, you can feel the momentum shifting and, and the, the confidence of this Birmingham Bolt offense isn't there right now. Yeah, the electricity has uh, gone out of the Bolts. Uh, two poor series, and now the Bolts' second punt. Brad Palazzo averages just 33 yards a kick. Picking a game and gets it between the XFL with 15 yards per kick. This guy is itching to break one at any time. Tries to get around the corner, does. And he has wrestled to the ground. Wayne Butler out there is playing with an attitude, and it ain't a good one. Back, back, back. Let's go. I'll get back when you call a clip. We don't call clips in this league. It's a clip when he hits him in the back. Watch the screen. I can't Jerry DiNardo it. may have a point. One of the bolts got drilled, and DiNardo is hot. Good luck defense they've got their backs against the wall field position in the LA extreme favor they come away with a field goal or a touchdown with the way the Birmingham offense is running right now it could be a little concerning for everybody in the stands Go! so the LA offense here they come Maddox 15 of 23 217 and two touchdowns can the Bulls defense Saladin McCullough breaks through a big hole and McCullough has been the running star tonight for the LA Extreme. David Knott with a big open field tackle on Saladin or he's dancing in the end zone. But Saladin's been the story tonight. We talked about it early. 47, camera run it, PCP on one, right? Trying to get that running game going and they've done just that tonight. And they're gonna win this game if they continue to, to grind the ball out. LA has its first 100-yard rusher this year. His name is Saladin McCullough. Maddox, play action. Maddox in trouble. Down goes Maddox as the Bolts put the pressure on. That's a coverage sack there, Bob. That is a coverage sack. You know what? I'm a little concerned because that, that tells me that we're getting a little greedy. They got the running game going, and they're here they're trying to go deep right now. I think you go ahead and just try to work the ball down the field methodically, work the clock, get a touchdown if you can, get a field goal if that's all you can get. Try to get that clock down to zero. Birmingham secondary of Butler, Jackson, Schelling, and Sloan under tremendous pressure here. Soar, soar. Third and eight now for Maddox and L.A. 
Why not? 48, cut! Jeez. Tommy guns it to the outside. And Jermaine Copeland keeps the clock running. You know, Darnell and Jermaine over there played a little game over there with Cedric Curry. They got 15. They pushed them both down the field. Somebody needs to come That's a mix up. On, yeah, somebody needs to come off on coverage there. We're in 49 on one, right? You ever think about being a defensive coach? You're so you're so witty. You're so intuitive. Wait, wait, wait. Pause, you. No, I don't want to be a coach. Two left, right? I don't want to be a coach. Coach, you got a 24 7, 365 days and you got no life. 48! I, I love what I'm doing. First down. Bob says give it to McCullough. McCullough, around the corner he goes, and Saladin McCullough. Finally tackled by Johnny Mitchell. Saladin McCullough is just blazing the trails tonight. McCullough is the man today for head coach Al Luganbill, scoring on short touchdown runs. He dove over the first time and weaved his way to the outside the second time. And then Al Luganbill told us he's not concerned about the kind of yards he gets, it's the amount of yards that he gets, and the average that Saladin is getting is outstanding, five yards per carry. Yeah, he said we're getting three, our goal would be four, but Saladin giving him They don't call time. five. Go! Got to make up for going to sleep in that meeting. 48! L.A. trying to run out the clock. 3.05 to play, and it's McCullough again! McCullough to the 20! And Saladin McCullough! Driving near the 10. Tackle by Snelling. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right now, it's working tremendously for L.A. right now. You see it coming? Gotta keep running. McCullough, don't you, boss? Here you come, boys. I had to stop. Good job. 46 power. They're going to continue to run. They're going to run him right here as well. They're going to continue to run him until they figure out a way to stop him. I should have been a coach, Bob. I could tell you that. Run McCullough. Al Luganville looking for a burst in the backfield, and he's getting it tonight for number 24. The Bolts need a turnover. Ken Oxendine comes in to rest McCullough. Give it to the Ox. And the Ox drives to the five. James Willis. I tell you, a touchdown here, Boz, and the bolts are cooked. The Ox pulling the cart down there, you know. Ken Oxidine studies poetry, and yet he squats 600 pounds. So, how about getting up off my back, Jack? I like that poetry. Like that poetry? That's good poetry. Isn't it? Hey, yo, I thought We've come to the two minute warning. <laughs> Jumped yeah. Up. Yeah, no, I'm not talking. I didn't want to throw it away because I didn't want to take a sack. Maddox okay. hey, and Wilden hey, hey, hey. Now, have been the stories tonight. Casey out of the game now. Maddox leading his team down the field. We're back in Birmingham, Alabama at Legion Field. Carmen shaking the booty here, Boz. But her team trailing by three, 29-26. It's been a great performance by the Birmingham Bulls offense, but not quite enough at the moment. L.A. leads by three, and Tommy Maddox has them in position to score again. You know, it's a real shame that Weldon went down when he did. Let's go strong talk. Casey Weldon putting up great numbers and then injured. And unable to continue. So it's up to the bold defense. Saladin McCullough is back in. The bold defense has come up big before. They could score. McCullough sweep left. And he's tackled from behind. They can get away here with just giving up a field goal. They have time. They just need to get Marker over there warmed up and loose enough that he can run that two-minute drill. David Knott, not to be confused with Don Knott, makes the tackle. That's what it is. That's why you listen, baby. Get outside. Good shit. We got to get the timeout quicker. Come to press it. All right, it's third and five. Third and five, Mike. Okay. We're still, we're going to still. Hey, uh, he said 145 goal line. Coach gave the okay. Jumbo, jumbo. jumbo. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. We're on the, we're going to be looking for pass. It's third and five. Okay, no. Hold on a second. We can go 80 now no. and okay. throw fade or slant. Right, hold on a second. Coach wants a play action pass. That's what well. he just told him. Not hey, you guys call what you right, think. Call, yeah. call, Tommy, what do you feel good with? What do you like? 80? You like 80? Yeah, I like, you 80. like 80. Let's go let's strong talk. Let's make 80. sure it's up make in the air. Make sure it's to our guy. 80 is going to be eight I man protection. You have two wide receivers 80. in the right. Max whoa, whoa, protection. They don't want to take a sack and they don't want to try to run a turnover here. So if it's not there, look for Tommy to throw it away. Go! 48! 
A huge third down here. 48. Third and five for Maddox. He throws the fade. Tennessee, he did it big tonight, the right time for L.A. for the XFL Extreme. Jermaine Copeland, his seventh catch tonight, what is it, his go, first man. touchdown, and the family is happy. Five goal line. Let's go left, left. 145 goal line, on one, right? So the L.A. Extreme. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Go! 48! Looking for the extra point. 48! Maddox unloads incomplete. What are you doing right there? What are you doing right there? Going back and looking at this again. I got eight man protection. Holding it down out here. No fingerprints, no evidence, baby. Trust me. There's no way that they can screw this up. Tommy throws it exactly where he has to throw it. Jermaine comes down with a big catch. Closes the door to Birmingham Hulks. He burns Dwayne Butler, his buddy, again. They ain't buddies running on the field. Tell me Tommy ain't happy about this. He's excited. He's having a good time. How do the players celebrate in the XFL? Well, if you have your own dance, like the x Pods, you can do your thing. You know, I never got the, the end zone to do any kind of dancing, but the dancing I do is so ugly, I don't think anybody would want to see it. Just like the old days, working over defensive backs here. Ah, uh, that's how we do it, baby. It's still the dirty sound. We all here together, just playing football. You know how we do it. Jay Shell, no fingerprints, no evidence. Legion Field, is it officially your new stopping ground? This has always been my stopping ground since Tennessee, since way back in Alabama in 97. Y'all remember? Kick is on the bounce. Birmingham with a minute 44 to get something going. 25-26 is our score. And Cope, one more shot of his kid. Kid's happy tonight. Well, of course Daddy's he is. doing he good. Drop the X spot for his little boy. Look just alike, baby. Look just like me. Please believe me. The life went out of the Birmingham Bolts uh, offense uh, when Casey Weldon we got doubles right, 81 was Z. injured. Read left scan on one right. Shoulder and wrist. Now Jay Barker, he came in for a couple of series, but he has not been effective. He looks a little rusty to me, boss. Well, he hasn't had a chance to take the kind of reps he needs. He's going to go five, five receivers out in this package right here. Let's see what Barker can do. Dumps it off to Bostic. Bostic breaks the tackle. And a short game before he's tackled by Jamal Duff. They're gonna, they need to move quickly here. Jerry DiNardo, 81, nine 81. years as a college right, coach right, at LSU and Vanderbilt. Yeah, he was an All-American offensive we guard at Notre it, Dame back it. in 73. Won a national title. Set. Excellent football coach. Good guy. And that is a shovel pass. Let's see. We've got a marker down in the backfield. We, we talked to Coach DiNardo yesterday. Asked him, he said, have Made you had any left. fun yet? He said, I've only left. had fun twice eight. since eight. I took this job. They've only won the twice. So unless eight. you win it as a coach, Let's go. Get on the ball. you don't have any fun. All right. Right there. Uh, there is Coach DiNardo. Looks a little like Mario Cuomo, don't you think? I asked you this once before in a game. Mario Cuomo. Uh, Mario Cuomo. You know who that's the government? That's the former governor, uh, former, governor, former of New York. governor of New York. Yeah, you know yeah. They, how's your politics? Uh, it's not real good. Not, not good. My Clinton jokes are good though. I got some good Clinton <laughs> jokes. Get them yeah. And I told you not <laughs> never to say them again on a television broadcast. Yeah, but that's okay. I, I got a pardon in my closet from from Clinton. I can say anything I want. He's passing them out like they're free anyway. Casey Weldon, the story tonight. He had a brilliant game before he was injured. Hurt, hurt his shoulder. And unable to continue. Eight, uh, Trey left. Yeah, even, even though that they didn't play, they didn't end they up winning one, this game, they one. played with so one, much more one. confidence than they Absolutely. had. Absolutely. You know, Jerry Donato has got to be happy about that. And they're still playing for second place in the, in the, in the East. So that, that, that stretch is wide open. Barker unloads. Barker's intercepted. A pass underthrown. And Del McGee 
who played his college ball at Auburn, not far yeah. from here, ices it for Los Angeles. That closes out a $100,000 bonus for the LA Extreme. That's number four. Yeah, yeah, sit That's 100000 per player now. They get to split up. Barker has been ineffective. Just two of five for nine yards and a couple of interceptions. So Barker, Rusty, and they're going to have to get him in shape for next week and tune him up uh, if Weldon can't go. You back. Quarterbacks in the XFL, tough guys. We've seen it week after week. A guy gets hurt and he comes right back and plays. For Tommy Maddox and the LA Extreme, we wondered where they be focused tonight, Boz. What's your opinion? Were they? I thought they were focused. Hey, I thought they were more than focused. They did the hey, things Cole. that they needed to do to work on we some of the problems receiver. they had in their offense, which was running the ball. And so now that they've got that weapon working, now they've got a balanced offense. It's going to be harder to game plan, especially going into next week's battle when we're setting up with Orlando 6-0 and Los Angeles at 4-2. It couldn't be a bigger battle in the XFL season the next week's game. Now Logan be feeling good. He's looking at his fourth win against two losses. And they will take the kneel down. Time block, time block. And I was very concerned about them coming in and be lackadaisical. But the one thing he said he was most concerned about is that they carried the momentum that they started in New York over here to Birmingham so that they go back to L.A. for that showdown against Orlando at 4-2. And that's exactly what they've done tonight. Good luck to you. Let me talk about a game. 17 to 25, 239, three touchdown passes tonight for you. Well, the offensive line did a, uh, a great job. We ran the ball, we threw the ball when we had to, and uh, to be able to run the ball like that, uh, the offensive line came in here, knew what they had to do, and they played well. First in the pass, last in the rush, but McCulley gets over 120 yards tonight. Well, he, he made some great plays. Uh, like I said, the offensive line did a great job, but when uh, he had some guys, he made them miss and uh, made some huge plays for us. Now you got some help. Vegas loses, San Fran loses. You guys are now tops in the West. Well, we just got to keep taking care of business. Uh, we can't worry about that. Just go out every week and play hard. And uh, It's nice to be on top, but we got to stay there. I know you and Casey, your friends, you saw him go down earlier. Just asked about him a second ago. Did that bother you to see him obviously go down injury? Well, obviously, he was having a great game, and, and to see a guy go down and get hurt uh, when he's having a game like that uh, was unfortunate. I just hope he's all right and he comes back and plays well. Casey, Tommy Maddox wanted to know, are you okay? Tell us, uh, how does the shoulder feel right now? Uh, it, it's banged up a little bit, but uh, we'll wait and let, this, let it die down. Hopefully tonight, find out tomorrow. Do you think your gut tell you you'll be back next week or not? Uh, I, I don't know right now. Right now it doesn't look too good. So, uh, but hopefully, wonders of medicine. See what happens. Your, your numbers were outstanding tonight. 16 of 21, 300 yards, three touchdowns. You missed five passes all night. Well, this it looked like it might have been a winning effort if you had stayed in the game. You think about that? I, I liked our chances if I could have stayed in. Uh, Jay, Jay had a tough break there. He's a heck of a quarterback. Just never got a chance to show what he can do. But uh, so we'll just have to regroup. And uh, think about football, you can't quit. You just got to keep going. A lot of Bama fans around here. You're a marked man, my friend. Hey, hey, they can be mad at me all I want, all they want. I'm just playing football. I can care less what they say. They can hate me. I don't care. Hey, I'm just out having fun, doing what I got to do to make it to the next level. You got to be pretty psyched. You guys are now tops in the West Vegas and San Fran both lose this weekend. Well, it's a plus. You know, now we just go ahead to stay focused, go ahead, and just worry about Orlando next week. I was going to say, you go to an undefeated team next week. Can you guys take down the undefeated Rage? Hey, we dag, we dag on the show going to try. Trust that. I mean, we're going out to give it 100%. I don't think there's a team out there that we can't beat. So I'm not going to say no. You know, hey, we're going to go out there, whoop them at home. Trust me, that's how we do it. So earlier tonight, it was a scoring fest. Birmingham getting on the board early with Stepford Williams and then Saladin McCullough, a couple of short touchdown runs. And this one just went back and forth, Boz. Both teams came out smoking. They came up with the big plays. Stepford, as always, as usual, coming in, stepping into the show light. Tommy Maddox answering right away. Damon Gibson coming right back. It went back and forth. And unfortunately, the injury, I think, cost Birmingham this game tonight. That was uh, Eddie Smith. And then L.A. responding. Maddox with the fade. To uh, Copeland. Copeland with the X spot. This game had it all. The standings in the East. 
the Orlando Rage. They look like the best team in the XFL. Unbeaten at 6-0. and The Bolts are 2-4, and tied with the Hitmen. Hitmen playing a little bit better. Enforcers need to get better next week. The LA Extreme all alone on top, but they can't afford to lose next week because the Demons, the Outlaws, and the resurgent Memphis Maniacs right behind. Be sure to be with us on the for the XFL on Sunday, or Saturday night, NBC at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, when the Birmingham Bolts battle the Las Vegas Outlaws. And then Sunday at 4 Eastern, the Orlando Rage take on the Los Angeles Extreme. That'll be a biggie. Then at 7 Eastern, the San Francisco Demons meet the Chicago Enforcers right here on UPN. We hope you enjoyed it. Once again, the final score, the Extreme beats the Bolts. 35-26 for Boz, Barkan, and Raggy. I'm Marlo. I'm gone. football capital of the south birmingham alabama ellen is on top tonight